You're on air, bud. You're also muted. The line. Now I yeah, hear you. Uh, I'm, yeah, okay, good. We can we can hear each other now. Yeah, you're on. Say yep. hi. <laughs> the show's going. Yep. I, I, I get you. I was hearing an echo. I was trying to do something about that. So what do we got, Jimmy? Uh, well, usually you know, the host would say something like, <laughs> welcome to Skep Talk. I'm Aaron Raw. Uh, we'll be taking calls tonight. I'm willing to debate anybody on any topic, especially want to talk to creationists, flat earthers, theists. Would love to hear from you and you tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, and then enjoy the uh, uh, what would follow as an, uh, some sort of evisceration. This channel is The Line. You should support on Patreon, patreon.com slash call the line. It supports both the hosts and the shows and the expanding development. And we have some very exciting things launching in 2023. All right, do you remember all that? Go ahead. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding, Jimmy. You did that very well. Thank you. That was, that was good. <laughs> So do we have uh, we have callers lined up? Yeah, we sure do. Did you open up the uh, Did you open up the good old the good old call-in system on your end? No, no, I, I didn't. We, you, do you mind? Hold on. You can't. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we might want to remove <laughs> the dog. <laughs> He's uh, yeah, he's uh, attached to my lap at the moment. Or, or, um, this isn't sorry. like game night the other night. Uh, uh, this one, this is a solo show with you. You can't just walk off at random points. You gotta, you yeah, gotta hang out. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I get yeah. that. Sorry, I forgot about that. Opening up the other page, and I don't even remember what the other page was. Uh, Colin Studio, ColinStudio dot com. You log in, you'd be able to see okay, everything. That. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like that you threw me under the bus for being late because I'd use the bathroom. And you're like, I showed up so early <laughs> and you were you were walking around doing snake stuff. I sent you the link half an hour beforehand. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Hey everybody, uh get your calls in 7206192288. There's a web link in the description if you want to call internationally. Uh uh very interested to hear from Theus. But no, Charlie, not you. I'm sorry, Char you're just snoozed for the day. Fuck off, man. Charles was trying to call the same again. guy. Yes. Is that the same? Yeah. That's got to be a troll. He called yeah. yesterday. He calls every time you're on. He calls every time Forrest on and wants to say, when everybody finds out how right I am, it's going to be so great. Uh, it's just, yeah. I, I just, good I'll Peter work Laurie on my impression. impression. What's that? <laughs> you, did, you did a good Peter Lorre impression. Yeah, that was that was I was trying to like not go too hard at it because I don't I don't want an impression of a person to suddenly go, boy, that sounded kind of racist. But I'll work on my impression of him. He has like a, a, a he sounds like a spe specific celebrity. I'm trying to remember who it is. And it's not Peter Lorre. I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. Yeah. Anyway, he just he calls and he calls and he calls. But uh, did you get the call system lined up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got. Uh... What, I can't see what the name is. Um, I got someone called oh, Math no, that, Boy ready for you. Okay, that's. Uh, I don't see where. The, yeah, I, number. Okay, that's number one. I'm not, I'm reading yeah. the head of the column, not the thing. Okay, so the Math Boy. The others are screening right now. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll gotcha. bring Math Boy on. All right, calling from Japan. All right, let's open that one. Go ahead and hit talk. I'm I'm multitasking over here producing the show. All right, gotcha. Okay, Math Boy, you're on the line. Hey, Aaron. How are you going? How you do? I'm good. Okay. I just have a yeah. quick life hack for anyone who wants to get good at math. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. What? What? Why? What? Oh, and I have the wrong name up too, but right. Did you call, you called an atheist call-in show just to go, I'm not trying to be me, math boy. You're probably a fan. You're probably a nice guy. What is the relevance to the tonight's topic of skepticism and everything? Generally, this is a show where you're going to call Aaron, ask him a question, try and challenge him, try and debate. You're just calling with math tips. Is that what is that what I'm at getting here? Yeah, I'm not interested yeah. in being good at math. Sorry, you broke out there, right. math boy. What are you saying? Okay, it has nothing to do with the topic of this show. I just wanted to say that. All you need to do is study algebra. No, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're trying to just now give your tip anyway? Look, man, I'm sorry. We're going to yeah. talk for a second about, like, manners. 
this isn't your audience. You didn't earn this audience. Like, I don't want you to not watch anymore because I'm going to berate you a little bit. But what the fuck, my guy? You're calling a skeptic show going, I'd really like the few hundred people who are watching now. It'll probably be a couple thousand by the end, or or I think we generally break a thousand. And just going, I want just them to listen to me talk about math. What the fuck, my guy? Don't, don't, don't why not take explain- up our minds. Why not explain how to remove the catalytic converter on your 989 Celica? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, my guy? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I Well, <laughs> let's, do, let's dedicate 20 minutes of the show to it. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's just take another We're gonna call. We're going to move here. on. Thanks, math boy. But no. Bye. Yeah. What the fuck? Who, what is, what? I'm sorry, man. We're waiting for like other calls to get screened and stuff. Again, we really want to hear from Theus and stuff. Uh, I'm going to shut up for most of the show, but I, I look, if you're calling, you need to call with a question. If you're an atheist, something you want to hear Aaron's commentary on. Don't waste this man's time. This guy's a fucking superstar. This is like one of the greatest atheist debaters who exists. I'm going to make you just sit there and take all my compliments and eat them up. This is one of the and greatest. I, I know, you know what that feels like. I'm, I know. You're doing I know. it on purpose. And I'm, yeah, <laughs> one of the best atheist debaters on the planet. And you want to call in during the time that people are here to see Aaron and go, Hey guys, here's some math. Here's some math tips. What call in with a question or something you want. Aaron, we have Aaron for two hours or so tonight. Let's get, have an amazing two hours with Aaron. And if you want to debate Aaron, call and debate Aaron. If you want to ask Aaron a question, let's do that. All right. I think we have another call ready to go now. Uh, so Okay. I'm going to see if I can get to it. If this polar bear will let me get there. We got, okay. I, I, I connected it. It's Evelyn from Greece for you. How you do? You're on the line. Hi, Aaron and Timmy and everyone else on the stream. How are all of you doing? This is Can Evelyn. Can you hear me first of all? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, I just have a little frustration over the terms atheism and agnosticism because so many people tend to act hypocritical and dogmatic over what the terms mean, over how people actually use the terms. And yeah. some of them do it, do it on purpose, like fierce try to do to shift the burden of proof to make atheists seem like a position over a lack yeah. of belief, for example. So what can I do against people like that, really, if there's any progress that I can do? Matthias Knudsen in the 1700s was the first person to define atheism. Atheism, not atheist. It, stop. I want to show. Knock it off. So uh, Matthias Knudsen said that uh, atheism was a lack of belief in God. And he came up with a different word for people who also had a positive belief that there is no God. And then a a century later, uh, Berend Olbrock also identified, it was the second person to personally identify as atheist. And he too defined atheism as a lack of belief in God. And he also came up with another word, a different word, to describe people who also had a positive belief that there is no God. So for both of these men, atheism is just not believing there is a God. Atheism and non-theism, exactly the same thing. So the philosophers, the people who always want to argue that there's, that that, uh, you're not really an atheist, you're just an agnostic, they're going by, by Huxley's introduction of that word. But if we go back prior to Huxley, if we look at the Webster's 1828 dictionary, for example, if we look up what atheism was then, It was defined before Huxley, it was still defined uh, popularly as a lack of belief or disbelief. And just to make sure, because philosophers will say that disbelief means belief in the lack. It's not a lack of belief, it's a belief in a lack. But according to the same source, when you look up what disbelief meant, according to Webster's 1828 dictionary, it means a lack of belief, that refusing to believe or refusing to give assent to belief. So by all of these means, atheism is and always was a lack of belief. And then post-Huxley, anybody but philosophers will generally identify that, that atheism is a lack of belief. And every atheist organization, all of them, identify by that definition. 
American Atheist, I'm on the board of directors of American Atheist, and before I joined the board, they were already using the definition that atheism is one thing, non-belief in God. So what you've had throughout history is you've had way too many theologians and politicians and all of this who were way too concerned with this one yes or no question, do you believe in God? Yes equals theist, no equals atheist. That's it. That's all. If you answer no to that question, that's the only thing they care about. Nobody ever cared. If you said no, if you don't believe in God, nobody ever asked the follow-up question, do you also believe that no God exists? Nobody gives a fuck. That doesn't matter. Not to St. Peter, not to Jesus, not to Allah. Nobody cares. You answered no, so you go to hell, atheist. That's, that's really what it comes down to. That's as simple as it gets. Well, I'm a, I'm a philosophy enthusiast myself, and it makes me kind of sad because so many educated individuals tend to just put uh, these words into, or not words, I mean, philosophers tend to put uh, positions in everything, and they just want to... Yeah. Yeah. So, generally like so it's that. part of the... It's- it's part of the religious agenda to make everything into a belief. So if, uh, if, we, if we, like science is an investigation, not a belief system. You're not required to believe anything. And, and if you can overturn the status quo, well, then you get rich and famous for doing so. And science, science will reward that kind of practice. So it's exactly the opposite of a belief system. But believers have to pretend as if religion is scientific and science is based on faith. They really want to try hard to create this illusion of false equivalence because they don't have anything else. If they can't get you to assent that, yeah, that, that science is just another belief like religion is, they actually expect they actually expect people to admit that, right, as if that was true. But it's not. You know, there's a complete difference between a belief system and an investigation, which is what science is. Yeah, I understand. Um, thank you for the information, by the way. Uh, I don't have anything else to say. Um, yep. Thank you. I hope the rest of the show goes well. You can hang up on me or I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very kindly. All right, we will take the next call. Let me see. I will. Uh, we're, I we're, waiting that, on, right? we're, wait, we're waiting on some screening still here. We've got calls lining up, okay. but we're waiting on some screening. I don't know if there's... Uh, I think there was a person who had tried to get in and their connection was messed up and there ended up being a lot of time spent on trying to fix their connection. Uh, the, but The next okay. one I've got with a name is, is Dave. Yeah, you can go uh, ahead and take Dave. Okay, I'll take Dave. So uh, Dave in Maine, you're on the line. That's me, I guess. I'm I guess. on the computer. Okay. <laughs> is that Aaron? All right. It, it is Aaron, yes. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk briefly with, uh, with you about invasive species in this sixth extinction event we find ourselves in. Everything okay. on Earth that lives in the native world is running to wherever the hell it thinks it can survive. Currently here in Maine, we have a oceanic eagle native to Siberia that fled the wildfires a couple years back, and it's kind of made its new home here. I expect this to happen everywhere, but our entire outlook on invasive species that is that they're invading our territory and changing the biome in a way we don't want. But I think everything is going to do that. So we need to start thinking of invasive species as refugees. And you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get where people in New Zealand will have a completely different opinion on this. Why? Uh, they're, they're very particular about protecting their, their birds and such by, by not allowing certain animals to ever cross the, the ocean, but the waters between them and Australia. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. Everybody is. You know, we spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars every year in California to pull up a mafla grass because it changes the dunes in a way we don't want to change. But it's not the common thing anymore. It's not something we carried on our boat or that came over in the shipping container. We still get those, like those Asiatic beetles. 
But at this point, mm -hmm. everything is trying to move. If it's too hot, fish don't care. They're going to swim to where the water's colder. In Alaska, the people who fish for cod used to go out for six, 12 hours to the fishing grounds. Now they got to go two days north to the fishing grounds. And of course, all the stocks are depleted, but everything is, is doing that. Every species on earth is trying to adjust to what we're doing. And if we don't adapt to that in some way, um, it does not bode well for us. And yeah, I think the, the, the worst impact of, of invasive species so far to date has been our cats. Go on, to the songbird population? To every, to, to, to small animals, to, to small mammals and reptiles everywhere. Yeah, cats yeah been... I agree. But what, I, what I'm talking about is, uh, is not, not our house cats, our pets. I'm talking about uh, spiders that blow in on the wind from Mexico into uh, Texas. The fire ants have yeah. moved, and now you have to deal with that. They're all invasive species that we don't want, but they're yeah. all going to move. The jaguars are moving. The friggin' boars are in Christ. They used to be in Texas and Georgia, and now they're, they're running all the way up into Colorado. So these things aren't just invasive species anymore. They're refugees. Everything on the planet is. Well, I remember there being a big deal about uh, the fire ants when when I was a kid in the seventies, and I remember hearing these uh, these apocalyptic predictions about yeah, how oh, bad yeah, things were going to be with I remember when that. the killer I bees, that when the Africanized killer bees were going to come into the United States because they weren't here yet back in the seventies, but they knew back about them and, they, and they knew that the fire ants. Yeah, and, and fire Colin, ants. If you'll let if you'll let Aaron finish when he's talking and stuff, and just wait because there's delays and stuff. Everybody's talking over everybody, and it makes terrible audio quality. So if you just let Arn finish, and then after Arn's finished, if you'll like give him whatever question you're here to ask or whatever it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't realize there was a delay. I apologize for that. So yeah, there, there was all these predictions about fire ants were going to that fire ants could take down cattle and everything. And it turns out that it seems that the worst the fire ants actually did when they got here was that they are leading to the extinction of the horned toad. What we used to call a horned toad was actually a horned lizard. Um, because the horned lizards uh, in, in California, Arizona, um, they eat ants, but they can't eat fire ants because fire ants eat back. Yeah. Yeah, I've caught a horny toad or two out in Cali. I didn't yeah. know they were so impacted by fire ants. Yeah, there's not going to be any more of them much longer. What's your uh, yeah. uh, question for Dave? Uh, what's your question for Aaron here? I already asked it. I just, gotcha. I, I just wanted to make a statement. I think we need, we all need to start paying attention to what's coming into our local area. Like we have this eagle that immigrated from Siberia. It's been here two years now. It's competing with our bald eagles. Yeah, Dave. Hey, listen, I think everybody here agrees with you. We do want to get on to more conversational calls yep, and stuff. Right Once ahead. again, let's let, let's uh, let's hold off on on calls for statements, basically. But appreciate the call and uh, the chance to give that commentary. Thank you, Dave. Well, I just wanted to mention that to Aaron because that's his that's his wheelhouse. Sure. He can talk to other people about it. Sure, sure. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank yep. you. We've got Thea's calls lining up, and I just want to keep to the format of the show. It's it's uh, yes. Well, we have a. I see a yeah. theist here, James, in the USA. Why evolution doesn't make sense to him? Two birds, two bears can't give birth to an oak tree. This is not a real person. This is not going to be a real argument. This is not his genuine concern. Give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll see. Okay, I, I will hit talk. James, you're on the line. Uh, thank you for taking my call. I'm, I'm not too familiar with your work, R, and I was going to call last week but didn't get around to it to talk to uh, Forrest. But um, I understand you're an evolutionist too, so maybe you can help me. Maybe you can help me get my head around it because it doesn't make any sense to me. I'd be happy to. So I don't know if you're, like I said, I don't know your work, uh, but I don't know if you're familiar with uh, uh, evangelist and uh, science educator from the 90s and he's still around today but uh, he was a lot more high profile in the 90s a fella named uh, dr kent hovind talks a lot about evolution yeah i, I knew you were going to bring that name up and it, he's, the, he's, first not all, he's not a doctor james yeah, is called before he's this. not a doctor he's a he's what 
James has called before. He's not real. This is a joke. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's what I said. May I ask my question? Prove that you're not a joke with a reasonable question. We'll see. My reasonable question is I watched a debate between Kent Hovind and a fellow named Professor Dave, and he never answered a very important question. He said, no matter how many times you breed a strawberry with another strawberry, you always get a strawberry. And the Professor Dave guy could not explain how two strawberries can. It doesn't make humans have, uh, what is it, 46 chromosomes? At what point did a non-human animal give birth to an animal with 46? How did an animal with different number of chromosomes have a baby with 46? When the way that sperm and egg come together with 23 and 23, it's always got to be. I mean, I just don't see how it's possible for different number of chromosomes to give birth to. I don't know how to phrase and it, I but suggest, I, I think you understand where I'm coming from. I, I suggest you look up a lecture by Dr. Kenneth Miller, who's a textbook author on evolutionary biology. He also happens to be a traditional Catholic. So he's he's a God-believing man, but he also was the star witness in Kitz Miller versus Dover, where he had to defend evolution against the fraud that is intelligent design. And he gives a very good presentation on uh, what was the, what was the name of this pre presentation? It, it, uh, it's on chromosomal fusion. So they identified the exact location in our chromosome where there was a fusion of two ape genes, our chromosome number, number two and the uh, chimpanzee chromosome, I think, number 24. They fused in us and they've got all the indications of where they fused and exactly how they fused and all of that. So that's how that happened. And it, it apparently did and not cause any. As... I don't think they identified exactly uh -huh. when it happened. But then so also, in this, in this same uh, Dr. Process, Francis the Collins, who is an, and then Dr. Francis Collins, who is an evangelical Christian, but he was also the the head of the Human Genome Project back at the day, back in the nineties, I think it was, round about the turn of the you know Y two K, and he wrote a couple of books explaining that although he is an evangelical Christian, he had to admit that there is no no evidential support for Adam and Eve. He said that it is impossible for Adam and Eve to have to have existed as the, the first couple and the ancestors of all mankind. He said that humanity emerged from a population in excess of 10,000 people, not two individuals. And he's the head of the Human Genome Project and is currently under four administrations. He's been the director of the National Institutes of Health under Republican and Democrat uh, presidents. I guess I just have trouble understanding how if you crossbreed, I mean, how many thousands of times a day do farmers crossbreed one strawberry plant with another? And every time they get a strawberry come up with plant, new they don't ever get something else. They all, because that's against the laws, the laws of evolution. There's two evolutionary laws, the law of biodiversity and the law of monophyly, that it would be violated if Kent Hovind's ridiculous parody straw man were true. There's never been a time in evolutionary history where one thing ever turned into or gave birth to another fundamentally different thing. That is a lie that is commonly told by creationists. Evolution doesn't allow it, doesn't teach it, never happened. There, everything just is it. Evolution is descent with inherent modification. So you start with one ancestral form, and you get two subsets of that form, both dis, both different from each other, but they're still subsets of the original form. One or both of them may be different from the ancestor in some way, but there's still subsets of that. And then they have, in turn, multiple subsets again, which, again, are increasingly different from each other and from the ancestor. But they never are fundamentally different. So they're always just a new version of the same thing that all of their ancestors were. So they still you still belong to every parent clade that your ancestors did that never changed. There was never a time. Kent Hovind so is just absolutely wrong on everything he's ever said, including the, the bit about him being a doctor, because he's he's actually a convicted fraud. Okay, so you're if two animals got together and had a baby with a different number of chromosomes from the chromosome fusion, if that happened, which has nothing to do, first of, it has nothing to do with their recombination. By the way, that's a mutation. 
But then who is that baby going to have a baby with? Because there's not going to be another one like him for him to reproduce with because he's the only one with that number of chromosomes, Changing right? Changing a chromosome does not mean that you can't interbreed. So you're telling me that there was a baby that was of a, a, a human uh, hybrid that had a different we, number we of are, chromosomes we are than apes. the chimpanzee. We, we are apes. So saying mm -hmm. saying an ape human hybrid is like saying a duck bird hybrid. Can you imagine a half duck, half bird? Does that make sense to you? Well, all that I'm and you even is have a half duck, half didn't bird. Have anyone to breed with? Is it possible to have a no, half duck, it, half bird? No, because a, a duck is, a, is a kind of bird. Exactly, and we are a kind of ape. So there is no such thing as a, a, as a well, human ape hybrid. Well, I guess all I'm saying is that if, you know, uh, you know, 100 million years ago or whatever, when a, a, a more hairy version of a human had a baby, how could it have, what, who could he have had a baby with? Who could that animal have reproduced with that would give away to right, modern day humans, you know, 100 million years ago or whenever it was? Right, yeah, you can cut in, Jimmy, but I, I mean, I with, can't answer this. Not with response to his question. Hey, James, do you think that our show won't work if people don't pretend to call in, not understanding what the topic is, and then not listening to the response and then saying something literally in total contradiction to what the response was, just listening for keywords. Like, do you think that if you don't call in pretending to be a clueless theist, the line is going to crumble and we don't have actual honest people who are theistic ready to, to, to participate in these calls? Like, what is what is your motivation here? Is, 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 do you think you're helping us out? Because if you do, and I'm actually saying this legitimately, I'm not just trying to roast you. If you think this is helping us, it's not. We'd rather have the like honest, actual theists call in. Uh, people calling in to troll because they think it makes theists look bad. Theists make themselves look bad plenty enough. We don't need the extra help. Yeah, I'm being. I am being as genuine as I can be here. I've never heard a good response to it. Except I you heard actually heard like between... you actually heard like five from Aaron, and you didn't listen yep. to a single one of them. And then you repeated the same point without taking into account what he just said. So either yep. you are a troll, which is where I'm going with, because I'm pretty sure you've called before. I recognize your voice and I recognize that whole thing about, I don't know if you've heard about one Dr. Kent Hoven at the beginning is a huge red flag. So I'm going to tell you how to be a better troll. Or you are calling as a totally dishonest interlocutor and not even trying to actually participate in the conversation. Those are the only two. I, the third option is you're monumentally stupid. And I don't think you're monumentally stupid because the types of you're, you're, you're putting, you're stringing words together better than the amount of stupid this would require if you are genuine. I guess I'd be the, the, the second one. I'm, if you're calling me dishonest, but I'm I'm trying my. All right, James. Then go back and watch. I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt, right, even James, though I still think you're let, a troll. Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Let, let me let me just help you out with a couple of things here. You you said you didn't understand how there could be a difference in chromosomes. I just explained it and gave you the reference to a biologist, a professional biologist, who gives a full lecture on it, including all the genetics. Go watch that, Dr. Kenneth R. Miller on chromosome fusion, human chromosome number two. He covers everything. So there's the answer to that question. How can you have an eight man hybrid? I just gave you the answer to that question. If you had a time machine and an eternal lifespan, you could go back and watch the birth of every generation from, you know, from, from 100 million years ago, if you like, all the way up to your mom. And you would never be able to find the generation. You wouldn't be able to point to the first human. You wouldn't be able to distinguish them because from apes, from what you recognize as apes into humans, there's so many intermediaries, you wouldn't be able to say that one. Even if you found the one that had that chromosomal variance, you wouldn't have an external cue for that. They would still be able to interbreed with the other ones around them. Thank you for talking. I mean, I, I'm still not 100% on it, but I, I do appreciate you talking to me and I'll, I'll look up the Doctor, I'm sorry. Yeah, one I, other I, thing I know of, you said Francis Collins. I don't remember the other one, but if you could, I'll Kenneth, take a look Kenneth at it. Kenneth R. Miller. 
Kenneth R. Miller. And one other thing, on since, since she's brought up uh, Kent Hoban. Now, Kent Hoban has talked about chromosomal variants a time or two. And he's brought it up in arguments that uh, when we showed genetic proof that seals and bears are closely related to dogs, he dismissed all of that, talking about the chromosomal variants, the, the number of chromosomes bears have, the number of chromosomes seals have. But it's only when it's convenient to him. Because later he argued with me that, that butterflies could not be a subset of moths. And then he had to admit the vast chromosomal variants just within butterflies. So that there can be 92 chromosomes of difference just with just within butterflies. But since he wants to argue that butterflies are all the same thing, well, then it doesn't make any difference. It's special pleading. So he, he will take any fallacy he likes. What, what matters in one instance won't matter in another. Well, thank, thank you for, for taking my call. I'm going to go check out those, those lectures you recommended. And I'm I might call back next week to talk to Forrest if he's if he's going to be there. And I'm I'm sorry if I came off as pushy or dishonest or anything like that. I I legitimately want to understand this stuff, but it doesn't make sense to me. But I I'll, I'm going to go I'm going to go look up what you recommended, and maybe I'll have a better picture after that. James, also I would watch also... the call back. Watch the call that you just participated in, because the thing that frustrated me so much about you is that Aaron would answer a question. And you would then respond with a question as though he didn't just correct the question prior. So watch the call back and take notes if you are remotely genuine. I just had a debate with somebody that was very public uh, just a few days ago where I had a, a, a creationist I could confirm was a real creationist, an author of books of creationism. I get him on a, on a discussion with me live. And he did exactly the same thing. He would ask questions thinking I can't answer them. He only asks questions he, can't, he thinks I can't answer. When I provided the answer, he then tried to change the subject. He would not ever admit that he was wrong, on, that I would proved him wrong on anything. He refused. He kept trying to switch back and push things back onto me. So I expect dishonesty out of creationism. That's the only way it can be defended. But I'm not saying you're overtly create. I don't think you're you're overtly dishonest. Kent Hovind is overtly dishonest. So don't ever listen to anything he says, and he doesn't know what he's talking about ever about anything. Well, I don't know. I'll, I look. I grew up. I was homeschooled in the '90s, and that was the only. I'm that sorry. Was what, that was what we. I, my my parents didn't know enough about science to teach me that themselves. So we had VHS tapes from his ministry. <laughs> And it all makes yeah, sense but, the way he wraps it up. But yeah, but but I tell you, unless I'm it's sorry. talking about the consistency of prison food, don't ever take Kent Hovind's opinion on anything. Have a good night, guys. I'm gonna I'll, I'll watch the callback like the other host said. And if I'm okay. still not 100 percent on it, I hope it's okay if I give a call back next week and ask more questions because I am being genuine here. And I want to understand Absolutely. This, look it, me it up. We can have a private it conversation. It doesn't make sense to me because I've, I've only heard it painted one way, and every time I hear evolutionists try to paint it another way, it doesn't make sense to me how two animals – I know. Look, I'm not even going to finish my sentence because I know you're going to tell me he already answered that, and yes, I'm going to feel back and watch. like an idiot for saying it again. Cool. So have a good night. Thank you. Good night, James. All right. As, as somber as he sounded at the end, I'm still not convinced. And let me just give you the pieces of evidence for Troll. One – he kept using the word evolutionist. Two, yep. he knows who Kent Hovind is, but not who Aaron Ra is. And Kent Hovind has an Aaron Ra obsession. There is, I don't know how you watch and have consumed that much Kent Hovind and Aaron Ra never came up. That's, <laughs> that's kind of wild to me. Three, his, he told the screener two oh. bears can't give birth to an oak tree that is a level of straw man that takes choosing to say something that stupid so yep. at the end of course i started to feel bad as the as the possible somberness of his uh speech made him sound like he might be more genuine or he's really good at this really good at trolling and this is what he does for fun whichever it is james now you know how to engage. Maybe he's like, oh, I'm going to do a whole arc where I convert to atheist, deconvert, and I become an evolutionist. What's going on over there? <laughs> Somebody knocked on the door. 
Got it. <laughs> got it. I do blame them then. Uh, anyway, we've got full lines up, uh, lined up for you. So if you want to uh, uh, just pick one, I'll I'll go with whatever you want. All right. So I'm just going to go in order unless you have a preference. So I, the, the next one coming up is uh, Ashley in Vermont. And Ashley in Vermont, you are on the line. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I just wanted to say that I uh, like your show. Um, I had a quick point to make, um, and it has to do with an argument that I saw presented the other day. Um, I'm not going to mention the person's name because they're not here to like defend themselves, but uh, the argument that I heard was like, basically, like if the clouds parted and an angelic glowing being came down, performed miracles, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact what was said, but and perform miracles, et cetera, right in front of that person's eyes, they still would not um, consider that evidence to even consider for there being a God. Now, I just want to add that caveat in there, throw in there, I am an atheist. I do not believe in Christianity. In fact, I think religion has done a lot of harm to me. I am a transgender woman. I feel very targeted by religion right now. I'm in no way defending religion. But I do want to see good arguments made, and I think seeing like a once-in-a-lifetime exceptional event right before your eyes would be at least worth considering that there's a God. Now, I, I wouldn't think 100% there's a God because, of course, I could be high, I, someone could have like drugged my food, I could be having a hallucination, you know, there's other things it could be, but to say that I would at least consider there's a God, I mean, to me, that seems like a rational thing to do. There's lots of possibilities. Sorry, I'm going to intercept again, Ashley. The, Ashley, can you call next week with sorry. that? Because didn't you call the host out by name in the chat earlier? Yeah, and everybody in the okay. chat was saying, oh, you know, you're a coward, you should call in. And so that's why I didn't Why Why ask Aaron to defend Forrest when for, you can call Forrest that's next week? That's not what I'm asking. That's right. not what I'm asking well, him to do. Why not ask I'm Forrest ask, next I'm week, ask, I'm Ashley? asking... I'm at just, I know you're going to cut me off no matter what I say, but I just want to put that argument out there. You guys can defend it or not, but I think it makes atheists it. look bad. Well, yeah, you, you definitely can. I, I, I just want to say that you are also posing the premise on the basis that this is what was said, and the person who said it may want to clarify it because we're responding to a premise in your well, summary of that conversation somebody, that may be inaccurate. What if that was somebody's argument? Let's just assume it was somebody's argument and not that person's. Can we have the discussion on that premise? Sure, go sure. ahead and have it on that yeah, premise. Yeah, let me let me because let me answer. I don't want, I don't, I'm not trying to misrepresent what he was saying either. So, okay. my my evidence for when when I was a neo pagan occultist, my evidence for that were were my personal experiences with the occult, my paranormal encounters, which I don't even like to talk about because they're so embarrassing. But I remember that I believed all of this. I believed that I was really seeing these things at the time. It was a very painful realization decades later for me to piece together that none of that really happened because it couldn't have. It was hard for me to understand how, fa how deceptive faith is that I could encounter these things myself, personally, engage with them the way that, the, the way that we did, and none of that be real. But in fact, it wasn't real. And I wasn't the only person involved. The other person who was involved through the magic of the internet, you know, we happen to cross people that we haven't seen in 20, 30 years. And whereas I expect this person to remember things exactly the way I do in one of the most vivid and important memories of my life, not only did they not remember it the same way, they didn't remember it at all, period. And they were involved. And this was, I thought, formative for both of us. Since then, I, I knew a guy for years who, I mean, I knew that he was a little nuts, but, and he was a little too fixated with cats. He had posters of lions and tigers and leopards just all over his house. He was a huge cat fancier. And so it was no surprise to me when he told me that he now worshipped Bast, the, the Egyptian cat-headed goddess. Well, of course you do. The surprising part was when he told me the reason that he worships her was because she physically appeared to him. She, she manifest in his house physically, audibly, visibly, 
and tangibly she embraced him and bade him to become her disciple, which of course he agreed to do. And admittedly, I mean, think about how, how convincing would that be? Some topless chick teleports into your house and she has the head of a cat and she wants you to worship her? Okay. That's that's perfect evidence, right? Is that is that evidence enough for a God? Would you believe in that God? Fast. Well, Shows I up. think there's a I think there's a sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I think there's a difference between enough evidence and just some evidence. I'm just saying hey, this some is, evidence. I'm not this saying is a woman with a cat head. And she's standing in front of you, talking to you. You can feel her. Is that not enough evidence? Well, I mean, as others have pointed out, there's always the possibility that one is hallucinating or having some sort of uh, mental health crisis or something along so those lines. So if you lines, see this so... God, if you see a more conventional or popular God, a more run-of-the-mill God performing miracles right before your eyes, how is that any different than a topless, cat-headed woman appearing in your house? It's not. But here's the thing. When a theist, when a theist is like trying to drive at what is good evidence, and they, and they bring up something like, well, what if you see something with your own eyes and you say that's not evidence? You're kind of playing into yeah, the it's, theist it's hand not. saying nothing would you're saying nothing would convince me no matter what. And they believe we're hard-hearted and nothing would convince us. So you're literally giving them the soundbite that they need. To, no, to I'm not saying nothing. Will will be, it seemed like when, when you well, had uh, what was the we're what was it, the movie then. A Beautiful I Mind? I mean, we don't. You remember you remember the movie A Beautiful Mind? You remember the, the the guy that had the hallucinations? He would see people that aren't there, and so he learned to get other. When he when somebody comes and tells him that he might be eligible for the Nobel Prize or whatever, he grabs somebody some other passerby and say, "Hey, can you see him?" He's looking for objective verification. So that's the difference between right. subjective and I, and, evidence and objective evidence. And, so if objective. I, and if can I we saw all... God appear for it, I'm sorry, there's a little delay. I'm not trying to interrupt you. Or <laughs> I, If I saw God appear before me or a being that said it was God, I would look for objective evidence. I would ask other people if they saw it, if anybody took pictures of it, et cetera. So yeah. I don't think anything what I'm saying is that outrageous, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's the that's the problem I have with Bast. Of course, when she showed up, he was alone. Of course, he was alone. She's not going to show up at a house party so that twenty other people can see her, right? And that never happens. Why does that never happen? Because you can never get objective verification for these things. That's why God only talks to individual people when they're alone. Well, in the case in the case of like God opening the clouds and appearing before me. Like I, I'm assuming I would not be alone in that situation, or I would like to make that assumption or that caveat to that that there maybe yeah. would be objective evidence. I certainly, I certainly wouldn't shut off a theist by saying, "Oh, I definitely am not going to believe no matter what I see." Which is, I'm not saying that's what it what it what he was said, but that's what it sounded. You know like that exact thing happened. That, that exact same thing happened. It happened in Mexico. There was some small town in Mexico where it, it the, oh, yeah, the, the been, Madonna. Yeah. Madonna showed up in the sky, you know, not not, not the modern Madonna, the, the Catholic Madonna, you know, the, the mother of no, Mary, no, I know or Mary, mean, right? mother of God. She yep. shows up in the sky and all these people see her reportedly. Now, the story we hear is that this entire village witnessed this apparition in the sky, that, that the Madonna appeared in the sky and all these people saw her. Well, can we what, what if we become the, just a tiny bit skeptical about that? What if we want to talk to somebody, any of the people who saw this? Well, all we ever hear is the report that there were many witnesses. We don't actually get to meet any of the witnesses. Curious. There's no photos ever. How do we know that it wasn't a cloud formation? How do we know that there were multiple witnesses? How do we know that there's any truth to this story at all? That's just the way these manifestations of God always happen. Well, I know, but here's another way to look at it, and maybe people will understand this better, but like, let's say I had an experience and I saw something, and let's say that, let, let me think how I want to word this here. Um, yeah, there's this line out of the Bible that there no were 500 witnesses, or that there were many witnesses. I think there's actually two. There's one that was many witnesses, and this is for the undead saints that have crawled out of their graves and are walking around downtown Judea. And then there was another one where there was supposedly 500 witnesses to this other thing. But we don't have the testimony for any of these people. 
not one of them. We just have the claim right, and that lots of people saw it. I'm not saying that something like that would be 100% convincing. Here, When you're talking about skepticism, let me pose something for you. Like, let's say I have an experience and it's like pretty unsettling, pretty extraordinary, and I look for witnesses, like, and the witness is like, we saw it too. How do I know the witnesses are real? I mean, I could doubt everything if I want to. I could be a solipsist and say nothing will prove to me that this is real. At some point, I have to draw the line and say, like, it's no way to live to just be going around through life being like, oh, nothing I see is real. Like, at some point, like, you have to say, oh, well, maybe I did have an experience or something did happen. I'm not saying it's God, but maybe something happened and maybe it would be wise to consider it. Now, I'm an atheist and nothing like that's happened. And I don't know why it's... I don't know why we can't just concede that premise because it's not like it's going to happen. So if we said to a theist, oh, okay, if God comes down before me, I'll accept it. It's not like tomorrow God's going to come down before me. So I don't know why we don't just concede that point. So when Christians tell me about their personal religious experiences, they expect me to be completely wooed by that, that I'm just going to fall down and say, well, yeah, I, that, that with a testimony like that, how could I doubt you? But the thing is, is that when I still believed in the paranormal experiences that I had as a neo-pagan, I would convey these stories that, I, like I said, I don't even talk about now, but when, but when I believed in them, I would tell Christians about these experiences that I had, and they would just, they had one raised eyebrow, or they just, they completely dismissed everything that I say. So how, how could I take seriously whatever their subjective claim of experience is when they've completely dismissed mine. They're, they they don't even pretend to consider my testimony. So what what value is theirs? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a difference between evidence that would convince me and evidence that I could then take to somebody else to convince them. Like if I had a personal experience, it might be really convincing to me, but I wouldn't expect anybody else to believe it. Yeah, that's why subjective evidence is useless. I, mean, it, it, I don't have to admit your subjective evidence. By definition, subjective evidence is only evidence to that person, not to me or anyone else. So it doesn't become evidence until it is factual, which means we can both verify that this thing is true and indicative of that position. So until you have that, it's not evidence at all. I'll take anything that qualifies as evidence. Is it a fact that we can both show to be true that also supports this conclusion? exclusively, or at least more than any other alternative. T tell the people that, well, that give I you this hell about it, tell them you'll take anything that qualifies as evidence. But I'm, I'm sorry that subjective impressions don't. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to, for now, say, like, if I see somebody, like, regrow a limb, that I'm going to consider that it might be a miracle. I'm not saying that 100% it is. But I'm willing to concede that maybe it's a miracle. And I think it's a safe bet because that's not going to happen. Rather than looking yeah, like God nothing a, will convince me to a theist. But. God, uh, God does a lot of faith healing, but for whatever reason, never regrows amputated limbs. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm willing to concede the point. If he does that, I'll believe. I think that's fair. If he strikes me down right now, I'll believe. I'll be, I'll be dead, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I, I, I really love you guys' show. Uh, chat's just like eviscerating me right now. I don't know why so hostile. I've tried to be, you know, uh, a good caller, I guess. <laughs> and I've called you guys before and we haven't had any problems. So, um, have I been rude I, to I you? I hope people understand that this, what's that? You have I been rude? rude. No, <laughs> you're okay. Nah, you're great. I mean, the, I love your let's, shirt too, let's by clarify the, the beginning of this interaction started long before the call when I believe you called Forrest an asshole. Uh, yeah, it's true. Right. I did and, then, and then you also said, OK, can we now do this call under this premise and not assign to Forrest? And then about 10 minutes into the call, invoked Forrest again and said that you believe that's what he was representing. And by the way, you were again wrong. So it's not as though this, I understand I, I, you don't I'm want to see the hostility. I'm sorry if I did that, it was an accident. I would I recommend that, I call Forrest next week. Forrest is extremely polite and he will go through it with you and explain the difference. Forrest, I believe, was restating what is an old Christopher Hitchens thing, which is even if you took the Bible and could prove all of the events, including the miracles happened, as skeptics, that does not prove to us that Jesus is divine and that, that he's the son of God or any of the other stuff. It wouldn't prove any of that. 
And so that was what he was sort of stating in the situation with you where you're going, I'll concede this. Many of us who are skeptics will never say we're going to turn off our skepticism because somebody topped what what uh, what's his face can do in Vegas. The magician, Chris, Chris Angel. Uh, yes. We're not going to turn our skepticism off for I anybody. Think- I've seen you guys. I've seen you guys concede things for the sake of argument, though, and that's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about for the sake of not making an argument. Except for it was that if you want us to concede to people, you, uh, I shouldn't engage in it because now I'm jumping in. This is our show, and you want to have the conversation, or you want to criticize Forrest. I can Forrest. call. I can call. call Forrest. I can call Forrest. I tried Thank to you. do it more generically, and I'm sorry. And I apologize. And I apologize for any hostility that I had. I I'll, think my points are valid. If people can think I'm arrogant or whatever, but. A lot yeah. of us love Forrest and are going to react a certain way when you start by calling him an asshole. That's, that's he's a nice, he's be. a nice, he's a nice guy, and he and he really knows his subject matter. I just don't think he's very good at debating. Sorry. Okay, uh, Ashley, I'll, do you okay. think you I'll did a good job with this one? <laughs> I don't think you're good uh, at making I, points. I'm sure from your, I'm sure, I'm sure from your perspective, no, but you know, you yeah, guys, from the perspective of a, the of a consistent button, so skeptic, I, I, I haven't muted you yeah. once. Did I mute you one time, Ashley? I know, but there's. But, there, but there's a fear of muting. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, first of all, if you're talking about this being a formal debate show, no one's ever claimed it was. You weren't muted once. Yeah. You started the interaction by calling Forrest an asshole. You misrepresented Forrest. You invoked Forrest later. And then you made points that were basically Jimmy, your I love you. you're skepticism my, you're one is of my inconsistent. People, so don't, don't, do over, don't, me. now I am muting you. Don't talk over me as I'm making my point after you just said you don't think Forrest is a good debater. Right after all of the things I just said were true. And, and so Ashley hangs up. I, I, look, I get it. I, I, I don't, nothing is, nothing stops me from liking a person just because we disagree or whatever. There's no future in which I'm holding a, a resentment toward Ashley. I'm not even going to ban Ashley from calling in later. But Ashley wants okay. to criticize other people's honesty in the way they engaged. And what was honest about this engagement from Ashley? My goodness. I'm looking forward to this next call, so let me jump onto that one. Yeah, go on. This is Jessica from Utah. Uh, This is the theist Taoist, an argument for God from Taoism. Jessica, you're on the line. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much, Aaron and Jimmy, for uh, hosting this this call-in show. I love both of you so very, very much, and I'm very, very excited to talk about this uh, subject. Um, oh, I am too. So, oh, good, good, good. I think I remember in one of your videos oh, years ago, you mentioned that if you hadn't arrived at atheism before you had arrived at something else, you think it probably would have been Taoism, which I found interesting. Um, yeah. yeah the, m- what my statement was is if I had read the Tao Te Ching before I watched Star Wars, I would have been a Taoist. <laughs> but, but because I saw Star Wars first, I identified as Jedi because you know, I don't know if I you know did too. back when I was Mormon, back when you were Mormon, you were Jedi. <laughs> yes, because I wasn't allowed to have sex. I had magic powers and there was aliens out there on Kolob who gave me magic powers. Yes. I was a Jedi a hundred percent. I was a Mormon Jedi. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess, I guess I can't argue that, but now if I understand this right, you want to make an argument for God, from Taoism, and so I have to preface this a little bit because one of the things that I that I loved about Taoism is that my favorite passage from any religious book is this one quote from the Tao Te Ching, which is that nature acts without intent, and so cannot be said to be benevolent nor malevolent to anything. I don't know why, but I just found that beautiful. But that's completely contrary to everything about theism. Yeah, I would I would totally agree. Um, on the on the the fact that nature does just kind of act, I would call it almost in like a deterministic way. It just does what it does. It doesn't have a, a, a malevolent intent or a benevolent intent. It just functions the way it does. And for me, the Tao kind of in general to me, what I understand the Tao to be is just that a system that functions as it does without intent, being neither malevolent nor benevolent. It's kind of, so. I, I did tell a call screener it's kind of more deistic than it is theistic. I don't necessarily believe in a God that, you know, like the biblical God or a person type God, 
but that to me over the past few weeks, it has very much seemed like as I've been diving into Taoism pretty hard, that to me it does kind of emerge as like the, the Tao or the deterministic way in which the universe functions. Could it be in itself described as some kind of a godlike force? And for me, I've found a lot of relief in aligning myself with the way things are, that the deterministic universe, as it takes me along this ride, you know, I I can do something well, best, to improve my situation. At best, you're talking about pantheism, not literal theism. Okay. Okay. That's good to know the term. You said pantheism. Okay. Yeah. So that, okay. So I suppose that would be, I guess, a better descriptor, I suppose, but that would be what I think the Tao seems, the Tao Te Ching seems to describe. And as I've aligned, been working very hard to align myself with the acceptance of the way things are in a deterministic universe, my life has greatly improved. And it very much feels like a, a godlike force that just kind of interacts the way it does, neither benevolently nor malevolently, just is. And if I align myself with it, I find myself in a much more peaceful state than I had been when I only described myself as an atheist who didn't believe in any kind of uh, any kind of force that want, guided anything in any way. I also want to address your use of the word deterministic because I've used deterministic many times to describe something that where there is guidance, where it's not totally random, where there is a propensity to 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 not lean too far either way, that it is going to be guided to some degree, and philosophers always seeking something to argue about, tell me that that, that, that their, their definition of deterministic means that it can only happen this one way and that there's the only possible result and it can't be any other way. But that's not the way you mean it, sure. obviously, by the context of your sentence. It's not the way I mean it whenever I've described that. So when you or I say deterministic, we're only talking about something that's vaguely guided. But also, I would agree with the second one that the philosophers you talked to say. I'd kind of align with both. It's kind of a bizarre contradiction. I don't know. J Jimmy's kind of more closely related to Zelf on the Shelf. They've kind of done collabs. And I don't know, Jimmy, if you've seen Zelf on the Shelf stuff recently, but they've kind of described similarly the t deterministic universe. And, like, you know, that the, the, there is kind of a an awakening that happens through grace when you realize that everything is deterministic and that kind of affects things in a way where you just kind of realize that it's deterministic and it, but at the same time, technically there are things that you can do. It's, it's, it's kind of a bizarre, complicated kind of uh, counterintuitive. I zoned mess, out. So but, I, I only heard yeah, you, what you said you, after you are, call my name. Yeah, some of the things you're saying actually it's, are self-contradictory. So yes, yes, you can't I'd use agree. Taoism. <laughs> you can't use Taoism as an argument for theism. You can't. You can't go from Taoism to Spinoza. I and, 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 yeah, and I'm confused by what your position is. And I, <laughs> I think I had your position at one point, and I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> I currently hold it, and I'm a little confused myself. I heard it, <laughs> and but. It, my my conclusion, though, is that there are properties, there are there are uh, um, processes that will have some degree of guidance to them, but not for a goal. There's the, 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 no. the universe doesn't give a fuck about us. That, that's why right. you know ninety nine point nine infinite nines percent of the universe is in, instantly lethal to any form of life. There's just there's only so many tiny little pockets where life can't exist at all temporarily until the boiling cosmic chaos collapses and something crashes into it and kills everything. Right. I, no, no disagreement on any of that, which is why I I do. It's it's funny because it's, it's it's a silly thing humans do. I have like goals and plans for life and all this stuff, but. I also am like the universe is deterministic and I might die tomorrow. Who knows? You know, <laughs> and so the, something the, the universe could have totally different plans for me than I have for myself. And the more that I align myself with the understanding of that being like, you know, these are my tentative plans for life, but the universe doesn't give a crap about me or you or anybody. And it could all go to crap tomorrow. It's, it's in, somehow, in, in, Balancing in a strange way, 
in a strange way, I'm hearing in you, me, at 20-something. <laughs> well, how about that? I'm a 20-something. If I keep on this path, maybe someday I'll be as awesome as you are. And maybe. Uh, <laughs> did not say or imply that. <laughs> <laughs> Arne, right. are you, a, are you a universal determinist right now? I wouldn't say so, no. I I am, I just mostly. Said, I, I, I'm not, not as an infallible thing. So rather than interrupt and engage the call on your show, Jessica, call me sometime I'm on, and I'll talk to you about some of the stuff you're saying. I would love yeah, to. That sounds good. All right, and I think we're done. Alrighty, well, so. It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Y'all take care. Thank you very, very much. Okay, let's see if we have another theist on. I think we do have. We have Mark in New York, who is a non-denominational theist trying to steal man argument from contingency, the case of why God is a reason there is existence. Mark, you're on the line. Indeed. Thanks, man. Um. Yeah, so this is one of the arguments I've been kind of taking a look, closer look at recently, and um, I, I've heard some objections. They're a little Mark, over sorry, my sorry, head. sorry, sorry. I'm getting audio issues on my end, and I'm trying to record you. Can you just, is there anything you can change? Yeah, I took it off. Can you hear me now? This is incredibly yeah, better. better. Thank you. All right, I'll shut up. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, so some of the objections I've heard to the argument are very deep in the philosophical weeds. So I was uh, curious uh, what your thoughts were on it, Aaron, and if you want me to present it, I'm happy to do that. Okay, so the, the, the basic idea is that God is the reason there, exist, there is existence. If that's the argument, then this exactly. God is incompetent. Yeah, this God is utterly incompetent. So you know, it, it, God well, being may, the kind of God be. can do... What? He may be. What? Say day? No, I said in response to your point that he may be incompetent, I said he may be incompetent. But oh, okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah, well, see, so here's the problem. If, if God, if I were a God, and I'm going to create a universe, and the purpose of my creating this universe is for life, there's a number of ways I would do that, and it wouldn't look anything like it does. For one thing, I think I would create an eternal plane. And in, in that eternal plane, you can travel and travel and travel, and you'd never get to the ends of the earth because it's infinite. I could, I could make my, my world an Immobius strip that is itself an Immobius strip in another direction, in the, in the right angles. So it would just be eternal everywhere. And I, we would have life everywhere. What, that would, what would be, be one the of the possible goals. I'm sorry, what? What would be the what advantage be the of that? Is the purpose of the universe for life? If the purpose I mean, of the I mean, universe, I, I, I if creating the universe, no, is to create no, life, then no, let's I don't create. Think it's not, not, it's not, it's not, to, it's not an absolute. It's not to maximize the amount of life. It's oh, okay, for so, there to be. So, by by the, yeah. the purpose being life. Then, then this God has created a desolate world on which we have a single glass of water with a beta fish in it. But why would you need anything more than that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that kind of the beauty of it? Like, so you create an entire world, a desolate moon, for the existence of this one glass of water. With your beta fish in it, therefore the but entire moon like, doesn't need to exist. It, well, I mean, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is like God, God doesn't lack resources. It, it's not if if the issue was he had limited resources, then you, then I would see some sort of logical problem there. Like why would why would he do that? Of course, God has but limited resources. Been, That's why he needs your money. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so is that really is that the, is that your strongest objection to the argument or I, th I think that's the only one necessary 
So, so God creates a universe, that, 78 trillion light years across, and we've mm-hmm. got the one glass with the betta fish in it. Clap, clap. I mean, good job, God. So you created an existence that is totally useless. It's full of empty spaces, full of boiling poison, and all of this everywhere. But, but you've, you've managed to fit in all of that the, 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 the one tiny little bit of life. And the only reason we don't have more life is because why would we need more life, right? So let's just create all this empty, useless, poisonous, deadly space, trillions of light years across, all poison and death everywhere. But we're going to use the excuse that that because we have this one tiny rock less than 8,000 miles across that temporarily we have life on, that that's the the reason the universe exists. That's your argument. and you're no, you're, you're questioning you're questioning whether this was the strongest objection I had. I, I have to think this was seriously your argument. Well, no, 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 because I have responses to your objection. I just wanted to I just wanted to just I wasn't sure if there if you were going to add additional points. I, I have responses to that. I, I don't mean, need any. No, I, my main. Well, no, we do because your it sounds like what your objection is based on, and you might find this helpful. Maybe not. You probably heard it before, but. It sounds like what your objection is based on is that there is no good reason. And what I'm saying is I, we don't know that. There could be aesthetic value in the size of the universe to God. There also could be scientific reasons why, which is in order to have the galaxy and the stars bring their fuels and to have the heavy elements and to have the process unfold the way it did, which is tied to this, this separate issue that if I, if I have a 30 seconds to mention, I wanted to, to mention as well, which is the, the hiddenness of God, which your prior caller mentioned. There's um, the fact that God, God is supposed to be somewhat hidden to us because faith is supposed to be a voluntary free choice. And so if the universe was structured differently, it might raise a lot of suspicions to people that, um, almost like an intelligent design argument, that that could be a potential reason. Um, so it could be that God wants to remain somewhat hidden from us, and this is the best means to do that. We, do, we, don't, we have no idea. Uh, so God wants a relationship with us, but he wants to remain completely hidden from us. And he doesn't want to give any Not evidence. Complete. He wants us to believe, but he only wants us to believe on faith. And the only thing we have to have faith in are the most credulous and least reliable, most questionable liars he can find. Only people who lie bear God's word. That's it. Uh, and, and the only information we have about God is a collection of intracontradictory myths that have all been disproved. Because God is grotesquely inefficient. And the reason that life exists is because God created a universe of boiling, poisonous, flaming chaos in which tiny pockets, maybe more than one, maybe, we only know about one tiny pocket in which life can exist temporarily. And this is your argument. This is the reason that life exists is because God, the most inefficient, who, who are the contradictory liars? God. What? Who, who are the liars? Who are the liars? Everybody who professes to know fuck all about God. You mean like the common person who believes in God? You're saying that person is lying? Everybody who says they know anything about God. Every preacher. Mm -hmm. Every imam. Everybody who ever said that they know that God exists. Everybody who ever said that they know which God it is. Everybody, Everybody who ever said that they know what God wants. Who God is, what he wants, who he hates, and why where we're going to go when we die, anybody who isn't honest enough to say, hey, I don't know, I just like to pretend that maybe there's somebody looking out for me. Anybody that says anything like where they're professed to know what they don't know, because that's what faith is all about. Faith is not a virtue. Faith, Faith is only valuable to liars. They are the only people in the universe that need your faith. I guess my response to that would be, the strongest form of deception is self-deception, and so I would be more inclined yep. to... That's a perfect example. That's, that's what faith is in a nutshell. Self-deception. That's exactly what faith is. Couldn't have said that better myself. Thank you. <laughs> but how do we know that? 
that that that's really what the rub is. How do we know that? Is Seriously, that it, you know, yeah. Seriously. Well, because in other faith words, is asserting even, even if all the arguments, even if all the faith arguments is pretending are wrong, to know what you right? don't know, right? Faith is assuming things without reason and defending them against all reason. How how can you even ask? How do we know that? This is this this is the construct of it. This is how it's always worked. That's all it is. But I guess what I'm saying is like even if the arguments are not strong, even if people are deceiving themselves, it's still something that in a sense what lies beyond like science can't answer that question. And so if the no. science can't give you an answer to it, it seems to me like you have to be agnostic. You can't take the position that God doesn't exist. Okay. Do you, do you do you believe in other gods? Do you believe in leprechauns? No. Why? Don't you have to just take the position Why? that maybe because leprechauns they have no explanatory there's no there's no explanatory scope or power behind those hypotheses. It doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense. Yeah, I know so there's just like God. characters that just like God. Huh? No, God has How is that different from but God? There is explanatory But there is explanatory you know, there power. It might be No. You don't think God can explain anything? No. Never has. <laughs> and I think he never will. Well, I, I don't I know, mean, therefore, magic is not an explanation of anything. No, but I'm saying compared to a leprechaun or a unicorn, or the, those are things that Same we thing. know are fictional characters. Right. I know we that know God doesn't exist. Up. I know that God doesn't exist to the same degree and for the same reasons that I know leprechauns don't exist. That's sounds very unlikely to me. I mean, there's certain mythologies really? that we could we could trace. Uh, what's that? But the, let's explore that. What, you want me to respond? I want you to continue, yes. And I think you'll, I yeah, think no, you'll I accidentally draw that, the like, lines and recognize is, what you're saying. Yeah, so, um, no, 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 sorry, this is just because there's a little delay. Um, there's certain mythologies that we know are fictional characters because we could trace them back to certain time periods, you know, or yep, you might not like be God. able to put it on a specific author. But God is something that even if there was no mythology behind it, if, if modern history started now, somebody would posit God because it's a metaphysical hypothesis. It's not just some mythology like folklore okay I'll, I'll give you it this actually has i'll give you this i'll give you that people commonly imagine that whatever happens was somehow meant to happen or somehow arranged to happen that if you wish really hard that maybe you can change what happens and that somebody somewhere is somehow listening to all of your thoughts we 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 humans realize that that there are there are times that uh, maybe somebody is watching us that we don't see and so we go about our lives assuming that somebody's always watching us even when we don't think we that, that they can see us or we, when they shouldn't be able to see us we still think that somebody can see us and more intimately we think that someone can read our minds this is a common failing throughout all of humanity and this is what causes a lot of people to imagine a god Terribly unfortunate side effect. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, there's certainly a psychological, there's psychological reasons why people believe, but I think there are so many um, intellectually honest people who have given so much philosophers, mathematicians, physicists, um, the, there is no one psychological profile that fits all these individuals because then you, you just be able to spot it. And so, it's such a broad swath of people that believe Hold an irrational belief. that. Well, I guess that's that's the issue is whether I think it's rational. I think it might be mistaken. By definition, it can't. I think the. Did you look up what rational means? Do that. 
Yeah, rational means is based on reason. Yeah. And what is that? Explore that. And you're going to realize nobody, no, doesn't matter who they are, Nobel laureate, doesn't matter. Nobody ever believed in a God for rational reasons. It's definitively impossible. Well, that, I mean, this, this takes us back to something like a contingency argument, right? Like, that's a rational argument. Like, we want it, at the, we, not that we want it, I mean, we do want an explanation, but everything we're aware of has, that exists has an explanation for its, its existence. And so to ask... Doesn't like, we know it or not, okay, I'll give you that. It, what, what I'm, that I'm, of the mind, I'm of the mind, according to, I've, I've had the, the good fortune of talking to a number of cosmologists on this. The universe didn't come from anywhere. The universe always existed. The universe always existed. Even if it yeah. always existed, it would still require an explanation for its existence. I don't think its infinite duration negates that. Right, because you would still be justified in asking, what is the explanation for its existence? Like the fact that it, the past maybe goes back infinitely, I, does that really take away a need for an explanation? You're still left think, wondering, well, like, yeah, where did this all come from? Why? If it, if it always you, existed, then by definition, it didn't come from anywhere. Well, so you're saying it, 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 it exists necessarily. Because I think those are two different things. Like, it can, it can exist. If, if, if nothing existed, then nothing comes from nothing, so nothing would still exist and we wouldn't be here to talk about it. So the fact that we are here to talk about it means that something existed, and since you know, the first law of thermodynamics is that matter cannot be created or destroyed, and even models of cosmology that have a singularity still speculate that, or still say that the singularity was itself eternal, and that the universe you know, and the universal laws, as some of them at least, have to be eternal, like universal wave function have to be interpreted as eternal, then the universe right. is in one sense or another eternal. And it's not that it doesn't need, need a, an, an explanation, but for me, personally, it doesn't matter what the explanation is. If there was a beginning of the well, universe and, 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 or, or not, really doesn't matter to me. It doesn't change one bit about what I study. Either way, evolution is still a thing. The Bible is still false. Either way. Well, it's interesting you brought up the, the quantum wave function because this is, this is a point that actually gets discussed uh, in some of the theist circles because it's essentially that almost be, turns into a design argument because what, what, you, what you have is if you have the Big Bang singularity, and then if, if, the, if somebody posits like, well, before that, we just had the laws of physics and they just sort of existed in some sort of platonic form. In a sense, like what there is, there's something called like the uh, wheeler de Witter uh, equation. And in order to solve that equation, you need to put in constraints to generate the universe that we have. It effectively becomes a design argument. But somebody has to go in and to solve generate that the universe. So we need something to, to create the thing that was never created. So we need to create well, someone to cause the thing that was never caused. It just it sounds it seems more rational. No, because what I was going to say is math is usually not doesn't math math doesn't cause anything. Math is just a description that we put onto things. But onto, I was you know, talking like, about math. Just a way. Well, I meant like I'm with the, about the notion of, of a god. Like, right. So so we're <laughs> so we're arguing for the notion of a god. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you're trying to say that that's rational, that in some way. Yeah. Belief in a magic invisible man who caused the thing that was never caused, who created that which was never created, is somehow rational to assume when not only is there no evidence for such a thing, but all we have are logical contradictions. All we have are frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies coming from liars in its support. And that's it, and that's all, and not anything else. How is that a rational argument? Well... I think you you feel that way because you don't think there is good evidence for it, but but and, show and me good evidence. Justified. I Be the first person in my twenty five year career of arguing with theists every damn day. Be the first person to show me good evidence. 
Well, I guess it depends on what, I mean, all, the, all I mean by evidence is anything that has a tendency to make a fact of consequence more or less likely to be true. So it's not, I, I don't consider evidence to be some big thing. It's just anything that makes something else more likely. And, okay, you know, so my, my definition of evidence, like, the, the simplest definition that I've ever seen, the most succinct that I've ever seen is it's a fact that indicates. So a fact means we objectively verifiable yeah. data. We both agree that this thing is true. We can both show that this thing is true. And then it is positively indicative of and or exclusively concordant with one available position or hypothesis over any other. It has to be indicative. So show me a fact that is indicative of your God. I've already listed several that contradict your God. Give me one that promotes it. I think existence is a fact that lends some some tiny, I would say, zero point zero zero percent, but some. I'll agree with you on the first part. Yeah, it, 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 I'll, <laughs> the, the zero point zero. I'm totally down with you. That's that's how much support I agree with. You don't think existence at all requires any explanation at all. I think if there was an explanation required. It would not be mm -hmm. a magic imaginary man. But it's but why are you excluding that hypothesis like 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 ex post? You know, it almost sounds like you just you're not you're not open to that as a as a hypothesis. <laughs> okay, so anytime we didn't have an explanation for anything, right? Was it ever justified? Ever in ever in history, was there ever any time, any instance? when i don't know therefore magic was an acceptable answer no of course not that's where we're at but perfectly rational but, but, but like um uh, and you're actually a great person to mention this too because i know you're very strong in the uh the, the biological realm um uh stephen meyer uh and I'm trying to. I'm, I'm actually blanking on the other guy. Oh, John Lennox, who's a professor of mathematics at at Oxford, and Michael B. Uh, Michael Behey, Behe, I think his name's pronounced. Um, anyway, they're intelligent design proponents um, of sorts. Well, that's uh, arguable. Lennox, I don't know. Yeah, they, they they are design proponents, but I've heard their arguments, and I would argue that they're maybe not <laughs> as intelligent as they want to make themselves out to be. Uh, Stephen Meyer, for example, recently tweeted an upcoming debate that he's having with me that I had no information about. I didn't oh, even really? know. Yeah, he's he, he's broadcasting on Twitter that he's debating me. Nobody mentioned it to me. I don't know anything about well, it. The there was no date given or nothing. The wires must have gone. I, I I would love to hear you debate him because he's. Uh, oh, would he's I really love to like... debate him? Oh, and be he. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Let me have him. That would be so much fun. I, uh, but, I don't uh, want to, I don't want anyone to start putting things down on their calendar, but the next phase of line development involves debates. Anybody wants to get, help us get these things set up. Uh, yeah. look out in March. I mean, I'm down that to debate awesome. Stephen Meyer and, and, and Michael Behe, both of them, but because the they don't have, time, I would, I would, I would love that. Meyer, um, in Signature of the Cell, actually, like, it's, I was just look, trying to look this up earlier today. Like, in one of the appendix, um, he puts, like, a list of um, test, like, what, what's the th predictions that he thinks, like, would be more likely to be true, like, under the intelligent design um, uh, model. So he's really attuned, like, into the scientific method, and, you know, he's not a creationist. Except that intelligent he's, design he's really doesn't have a model. It really doesn't. Science can't, it's the, it's the postulation that they propose that science can't explain something science has explained, therefore magic. That's their argument. I will give Stephen Meyer one, one caveat, one credit. He recognized that some of the evidence that was being proponed, promoted by other evangelicals, other ministries and so forth was fraudulent. He was very hesitant about making the statement that, for example, the Inca stones that, yeah. were, that were proved to be fraudulent by the Peruvian dentist that was paying people to make these fake rocks with the carvings on them so that he could sell them to ignorant tourists. 
Stephen Meyer, I think it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Stephen Meyer, made the admission that some of them are authentic. Some of the, some of these rocks, these, these stones with the carvings on them, some of them are authentic. But, it, but he said, it was so funny the way he said this book. I think the ones that have flying saucers and dinosaurs on them are fakes. <laughs> well, I'm glad <laughs> that you think that. <laughs> <laughs> How very oh, tentative it is. But yeah, they don't they don't have that, a good they don't have a good argument enough. at all. And and, and Michael Behe, I delighted in following the whole Kitzmiller versus Dover thing when he was up on when he was on the stand. You know, when he when he makes these arguments that, that science will never explain this, that, or the other thing. And then the you know the the, the witness stack a book at fifty eight books tile fifty eight books high stack of explanations of the very thing that he said science will never explain and his his response yeah. to that was to dismiss it he wouldn't admit that he was wrong about anything ever because creationists never do that's what faith is all about never admit when you're wrong that's that's another summary statement about faith believe things for no reason defend them against all reason and never admit when you're wrong pretend you know what you don't know it, 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 faith is the most dishonest position it is possible to have. There's no way to make faith more dishonest than it already is, unless you're a professional apologist. And <laughs> Stephen Meyer and Michael Behe both are. No, no, they're, they're, they, they're, uh, they're not really professional apologists. They, they actually... Oh, like, yeah, they are. Like they are. Yeah, they, they kind are. they of morphed into that. They, but it, that's like... Uh, be be he's a professor. Like went to UPenn. He has his PhD, and he's a professor at uh, Temple. Saying that they, um, saying that they don't have different degrees. I'm not putting Behe and Meyer in the same category as Dr. Carl Baugh and Dr. Kent Hovind. I'm not saying that they're like you know the guys with the made up uh, made up degrees entirely. That they just call themselves doctor when they, when they like Carl Baugh, for example, imagined the university that he got his degree from. It never existed. Kent Hovind at least sent a hundred dollars right. away to order catalog to get his degree. My only comment about that court case is just, and they might have, the the judgment might have been correct substantively, but we don't want courts deciding what science is and and as a general matter. I mean, I'm not saying in this particular case, but we don't we don't want to leave it up to a judge to say like this is what you know like because that judge ruled that way, therefore, like, because I've heard that put forward as like, sort of like, no, intelligent design is false. Like the judge ruled against them in that court yeah. case. And it's like, Intelli in, not... that in that court case, intelligent design was ruled to be a criminal, or was shown to be a criminal conspiracy to get around the law against cre teaching creationism in school. It was deliberately fraudulent. It was, it was concerted to evade the law. It's specifically to evade a 1987 Supreme Court ruling. So it really was a, a right. criminal conspiracy. And that's all creation. That's all intelligent design theory is. It meets exactly none of the criteria of a theory. They don't have a model. All well, they're I, about well, is denying you. science in order to promote the idea that there is a God. No, they, they, I think they do. Like, it's the panspermia model, right? That, that like, that life was seeded through. It could, doesn't have to be God. It could be, like, another intelligent. No, be a space alien. no, intelligent design does not include that. And Dawkins said as much yeah, in, no. that, in that another grossly fraudulent movie that, that, that uh, I forget what the, the guy's name is. Um, uh, ben Bueller, ben. Bueller, that, that, yeah whatever his name is. I forget his name now, but he, but he, he did this clever editing on that. He asked Dawkins for an explanation where the answer is intelligent design. And given the parameter where the answer has to be intelligent design, well, since there's no God, then the only thing we have left is, you know, the aliens would have to be the only intelligence since there's no God. And then Ben Stein made the allegation that Richard Dawkins believes that the planet was seeded by aliens. No, he doesn't. That was never argued. Ben Stein is a professional liar. That's what apologetics is. Everybody who argue, who is a professional religious apologist is a professional liar. All of them, no exceptions.
I want to be very clear on that because I expect that I'm going to be debating these people. They cannot defend creationism without lying, and I'd be happy to defend that in a debate. Well, I hope you, I hope you take up the challenge, Adam, because I think it would be. A, I hope you hope I take up the challenge. Can... I just issued the challenge. Let's see how long we have to listen to crickets. <laughs> well, I thought because I thought you said he tweeted it out that like this. Well, oh, he tweeted so. out that we were already having a debate that we were never having, that I was never even yeah. informed of. I find out well, from other people. They're telling me, good luck in your debate, in your upcoming debate with Stephen Meyer. And I'm like, I'm not debating Stephen Meyer. And then they show me the tweet. <laughs> I'm like, this is the first I've heard of it. When the hell is this supposed to happen? Yeah. When was somebody going to tell me? It sounds like somebody was trying to orchestrate something like behind the scenes, like to get it, you know, like to. Uh, it's let not it that hard to reach me. True. And if it's somebody like Stephen Meyer or, or Michael Behe, who I would absolutely love to chew up like gristle, I would certainly accept. You know, unless I want to debate it, it really doesn't matter who the person is. It matters what the topic is. I want to, I want to debate a topic that can be won. You know, so I mean, would it's, it's how Meyer's the question books? is worded. That, I'm sorry, what? Would you read Meyer's books in preparation for that debate? No, I don't think I would. For one reason, I just flat out don't have time. When I do debate somebody, when, right. when, when I, I, have, I have done a couple of promotions for books for authors where I have to take the time out to read a book, but I, I don't read fiction. You know, I, I, I actually have to because I do the Book of Mormon series and I do the, 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 the Blasphemer's Bible series and I just did for three and a half years. I did the Quran series. So I do read fiction you know, as part of my job, but I would rather not befuddle <laughs> myself with fictional writing. So I don't like to read creationism. If it was any truth to it, no, then my associates would have brought that forward to me. They would have showed me, hey, this actually is true. Oh, really? Well, let me look into that. Let me reconsider myself. But that's never happened. I don't think it ever is going to. So, well, there's a lot of, you know, in, in the academy, there's a lot of um, bias against like even the word creationism is such a loaded term. Like they don't call themselves creationists. Well, I know they, um, they call like, themselves example, intelligent design theorists, which is just the, which is the same thing. Yeah. So, in the court case, what they revealed was that the, there was a book called "Of Pandas and People" that originally gave a description, a definition of creationism, and then uh, Barbara Forrest discovered. A, the, the pre-1987 version of Pandas and People and the post-1987 version, because that was when the, the Supreme Court ruled that it was illegal to teach creationism in school. And she discovered that the textbook that, that Stephen Meyer and Michael Behe were both promoting was exactly the same textbook. They just had two macro commands to change the word creationist to intelligent design theorist and creationism to intelligent design. That's all. That's what it was, a macro command to change both of them. And the result of that was that it was a misspelling because, hey, they're creationists, so they don't know how to spell things. And so one of them came up with, the, there was a, the, the macro command was confused by the misspelling, and it said C-Design proponentsists because it didn't make the correction correctly. And it yeah. showed that the change was deliberately deceptive. They were trying to fool people on purpose with an out and out lie. It was a criminal conspiracy to get away from to get up to get around the law against creationism in schools. Right. Well, the reason I said that is because I when I was in college, I actually did my thesis against teaching uh, creation science in the in high school science classrooms. I kind of took the position like it's not science if you want to teach it in some sociology class or religion class. You know that that's different, but it shouldn't be taught in the science classroom. And when I use that term, especially back then, I mean, this was a while ago when I was in college. The term there, there was this concept of like creation science, like it was an alternative explanation, like a myth story about how life got started, and it just didn't go anything beyond that. Like there was just no structure to it at all, and intelligent design. Um, like they include uh, the panspermia uh, hypothesis within the intelligent, like oh, Meyer only. You're, you're talking about directed panspermia. 
You're talking about directed panspermia, which, which also right. doesn't right. relate to this. But when you say just panspermia by itself, you're talking about something that's, inc- that's very different and also unnecessary. So I, I get a little bit confused as to why you keep bringing it right, up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because it's the direct, it's because that's the thing that, that Dawkins was like, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure the, ter- the exact term, but when Ben Stein asked Dawkins about it, he was taught when, when Dawkins said like the space alien, like that's what I meant by panspermia. Um, yeah. Direct. So it's panspermia, just the idea which... that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so you understand right, that what right, Ben directed. Stein did was deliberately deceptive, right? Um, I, I take your word at, for it. I, I, I haven't heard that before. I think when, when he I've said, when he, that then, when he batters, then cuts that interview and then says that this means that Richard Dawkins believes that life came from aliens when Richard Dawkins clearly did not believe that you don't understand that Ben Stan right. was lying when he said that. That yes, but I watched the interview and I watched. Okay, uh, and so when and Stephen Meyer and and when when and Michael Behe and the other intelligent design frauds changed the definition <laughs> of creationism to you know, they kept the exact same definition. By the way, the, the definition never changed. They just changed the definition, the, the word that they're defining, which means creationism right. is intelligent design and intelligent design is creationism they're exactly the same thing it's the same definition they just changed the word but left the same definition yeah, you understand that, that right a long time ago that was but does it matter when it was it. does it matter if that was two years ago or if that was 10 years ago that was a lie then it's a lie now right it was still a well, lie if the right? definition if the definition in 2005 design, yeah, when no, they, they were that, or, or in 1987 when they did that was it a lie? If they were being deceptive when they made the edit, like, yeah, I think that's shady. I don't think yeah, that's they did the, they like, did the edit specifically so that they could pretend that, oh, well, uh, teaching creationism is illegal, but we're not teaching creationism. We're teaching intelligent design, which is creationism. <laughs> it has the same definition. They just changed that one macro command to change the word deliberate deception lie do you accept that that was a lie i think whoever did that yes i'm saying i don't know that whoever did that okay so you you agree that stephen meyer and and michael behe were lying well no what i'm saying is i don't know if they knew that like they weren't you don't know if the if the book (laughs) that the discovery institute was promoting with before and after the macro could change before and after the supreme court ruling you don't know if the discovery institute knew what the discovery institute was doing when the discovery institute it demanded that they make that change mm-hmm. i'll look at, i'll take your word for i'll take your word I, you sound like an honest person and i take your word for it so um i'll look into it and i'm, I'm as i told I'm, you there is no way to defend somebody. creationism honestly you have to lie to defend creationism. Every argument for creationism, and by that I do mean intelligent design because they are exactly the same thing, you have to lie. There's no truth. Well, again, this goes back to whether it's self-deception or lying, because lying implies Does it matter? like a, a purposeful. Show me the truth to it. What's that? If you can't show me that there's any truth to it, then there is no truth to it, and we're done. Yeah, no, I know. Well, I mean, look, look, I think it's something you 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 seem to have the position that reasonable minds cannot disagree on this, and and that's just not the position that I have. Like, I think that yeah, informed yeah, that, that is reasonable my people can just can. Right. That is my position. Yes. We're at forty well, minutes. I, I just so you all know. That. Yeah, uh, and uh, we're not getting any. We're not getting definitely. anywhere. No, no, but it's 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 helpful to me to to uh, to, to 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 have this conversation. So I thank you for that. I, I would suggest I, I've made that. a couple of videos where I've asked for people to present evidence of creation. If you think it's a rational position, come up with a reason that that that, that, that qualifies as evidence. Show me the truth of your position, or admit when you can't. Creationists can't admit 
that they can't substantiate their claim. They just, they, they want to put everything off on the other person. They want to shift the burden of proof. They want to say, well, you can't prove there's no God. I don't have to. You can't show me there's any truth to the assertion, so we're done. If evolution, if, if, sort, I know this term rubs people the wrong way, but if like the macro evolutionary theory was sort of disproven, where would that leave you in, sort of, in, in terms of the science? If, and you're not, I don't think you're understanding the term at all, macroevolution has already been clearly demonstrated and directly observed and documented to start with. But if, if evolution significantly, some capacity of evolution was disproved, there still wouldn't yeah. be any evidence of God. If evolution were disproved tomorrow, the Bible would, has, well, was already disproved yesterday. There, there still <laughs> is no evidence of God. It wouldn't make that claim more likely to, to you in any uh, in any way. No, the Bible's still wrong. God is still wrong. God is still a lie. Yeah. Well, it is interesting. I mean, uh, one of the guys who gets criticized a lot is he's associated with over Jeffrey, forty minutes. Doctor James. Okay. No, I'll, I'll uh, let's call it a day. I'll let you gentlemen run. Thanks for sure the chat. Right. Is having a field day with me. <laughs> Right, yeah, you damn right. <laughs> See you, bud. <laughs> Bye. I uh, I like Mark. I actually do. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm at odds with a lot of people who, but you've now passed the lines rite of passage. You've been here a minute, and you've now done forty minutes with Mark, which is ba- pretty standard. Uh, where basically Mark's two positions are the God of the gaps, and the God of the gaps with ice cream. <laughs> like I, that's, that's pretty much that's pretty much the two uh so he's a regular caller is he yes and and uh, one day we'll probably get on to doing a call where because it, it's a pretty similar call most times uh uh he's he's very stuck on this idea that his position is reasonable i think your call with him was great uh if i do a call with him in the future i'd like to just skip past it because somehow he's done this this almost appeal to deism a hundred times, and he still hasn't um, really changed much. It's still God of the gaps, uh, and and I'd like to just go like, all right, let's just say you're right. Let's just say deistic God. Why are you a Christian, Mark? And I think that I think next, I I think I'd rather just engage him on Christianity from here on out. Because I feel like I, your I find call the fundamental the difference to be. That, that some people have something that I don't have at all. And I don't even, I don't understand what it is that they have that I don't. It's like when you're addicted to something and, and, and you've never even had that thing, how could you be addicted to it? I don't, I don't get it. But these people want there to be an intended purpose and goal to their existence. That seems to be the fixation that everybody has. I just don't have it. I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, there, there is no meaning to life. It, it's a stupid question. I agree. Uh, all right, so all right. we're going to do at least one. We've got one more call. I've left a line open if a theist debater wants to call in to debate theism. That's the only other call we would take. Otherwise, after this call, any call, any super chat of five dollars or more will be read out. Questions will be answered. Whatever. Send your super chats if you're watching live. Five dollars or more it keeps the show going. Otherwise, we have to sell the. We actually have to sh- sell the show to Mark if we don't raise enough. Uh, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then also uh, click the like button. It helps us out. It helps Aaron out. Get Aaron's like ratio up to work. We have thirteen hundred and twenty-four of you watching. Uh, but yeah, because only- it's hard to like this. No, I, I get that. I love this. <laughs> Uh, but only 445 of you have clicked like, and this is an atheist show. We, I, it's, it's sacrilege if we don't hit 666 minimum. Uh, let's get that. Let's get that 666 likes up. Hit that button. Uh, anyway, you can go ahead and take that last call if you like, and then we'll do super chats. And All right. So out. we are talking to Dave in Maryland. David is an atheist. Would you like my collection of links to various studies on abiogenesis, artificial life, and properties of the foundations of ecology? Yes. Thank you, Dave. And I guess we can drop the call. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Thank you. And uh, go fuck yourself. Do you, need a, do, you need a, do you need a way to get a hold? Oh, Dave. 
what the fuck, man? We was a joke. You waited 90 minutes and he hung up. <laughs> uh, it was a joke, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, well, anyway, how should how should Dave send it to you? What's or an uh, email? What do you want? How do you want it? Yeah, I mean, email email is fine. I mean, there's there's got to be a number of ways of of contact with me. Yeah? Dave, and I, I hope David's listening. I, I I love the I love the way he hung up. I thought that was funny. So I think so, it, did he say I, go fuck yourself, Jimmy, or just Joe? Because people tell me to go fuck myself as a as a compliment on this. Channel. I think he did say Jimmy. I think okay. he did specify you. Yeah, he was being nice then. It was a that's yeah. the that's the good. One. The only reason we don't want to do it on calls is because that can affect monetization. But comments and the like, we you know we love it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we'll, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give a solid, like th one more minute. If you're a theist and you want to debate Aaron, you can call in right now. The number is on this. Otherwise, uh, I think we just got plumber cracked by Aaron a little bit. Uh, otherwise <laughs> we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to move on to super chats, send in your super chats of $5 or more. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's the only way you're allowed to call somebody on this show an asshole, but you're still going to get reamed. Just so you know, if you, if you do, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit that super chat. We'll do the $5 or more. Anybody, any takers? I do see that 15 times somebody who is blocked. I have to assume it's someone like Otangelo. Cause I don't even know who's blocked besides Otangelo has tried I have to, to call wonder what, what that, what that? What is that guy's times. life about? It's like you. all he does is call into atheist shows. Well, except no atheist show will take him anymore. So now he just waits for someone to mention him offhand like this. And I'm sure he's going to make a 14 hour video in response to me just saying, I don't know if Otangelo's who called 15 times or who it is. But uh, uh, anyway, I don't know. Fucking you ready to do super chats? Yes, please. Let's get it. Let's get it in. I'm going to leave the lines open just in case. Cause I'd love one more theist call, but uh, only for theists. If you call in and you're an atheist, we're going to discriminate yeah. against you. All yeah. Right. I know I've said this every time I've been on, by the way, but I appreciate being on this show and thank you for having me on. Thanks, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Thank you. I, uh, I apologize for the interruptions that I, uh, I, I brought, but then at the same time, I also don't. I'm kind of like, on the one hand, I'd love to never interrupt. On the other hand, there's about four people, I know who the four are, I'm not going to list them off, who um, are too nice sometimes. And, uh, and, and you also didn't know about like the chat that was happening beforehand. And so I feel justified in every individual interruption. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I, I will, I, I will say that that one guy that was quoting Hovind, I, I wanted to say initially that that couldn't really be his position, but I had to realize that there are people who literally work as like slave laborers on his compound. So somebody actually does believe I, the shit he says. I got to tell you, I'm still pretty much team that that was, there's too many things. There's too many things that lined up. And honestly, the idea that they wouldn't know who you were as a yeah. Kenthoven sycophant <laughs> is a little insane. Hey, before I change your frame, because I'm 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 prepping it over here, could you uh could you get a little more to the center of the frame here? That's gonna fit our next frame much better. Let me also add this and click send on this. Okay, we should now okay, thanks. I just mean you're you'll see what I mean here in a second. Uh, the reason why I was asking you to do that is this is the frame you're now in. And a moment ago, your head was off of the screen. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yes. There we go. Yep. 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 Anyway, uh, do you want me to read them to you? Do you want to read them? What do you want? So this is $5 from S. Beav Golden Calf. How much do you think charisma plays into inmate 0645 2017's equal time debate tactic? Or do you think it's mostly just for gish galloping purposes? It's absolutely for gish galloping purposes. He wants to tell as many lies as he can, knowing that every one of his lies is going to, knowing that it'll always take like twice as long to correct the lie at minimum than it will to say the lie. Because you first have to undo the false knowledge and then present the real knowledge. And both of those individually take longer than it takes 
you know, twice as long to, than it takes to tell the lie itself. And so he wants to get as many of them as he can. So then he can say, well, then there was one or two things that, that they couldn't get to. As if that's justification. Do you see the call that's queued up there? Uh, is that one you're interested in taking? It's it's a theist call. A- Andrew is a theist. Yeah. Do you People are one? evil, not religion. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to take that. Yeah, let's do it. I'm, I, I, I don't so, know what your time constraints are tonight. I just feel like I no like worries. watching you fight theists. So, Andrew in Florida, um, you're on the line. Hey, this is part two. I was the... Um, if, if humans are animals and rabies is not evil caller. Um, I hope today can be a little more peaceful with Aaron. I hope you guys can control Aaron. yourselves. Yeah, can learn um, how to say his name. No, nah, actually, I'm done with you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. I hope you guys can control yourselves. Go fuck yourself. You want to call <laughs> in? You want to come in? You come goddamn correct. La- By the way, not only he goes, I was the, if uh, Ra- he doesn't listen. Andrew, we've had before, doesn't listen at all. He He acts like he made that call once. He called in with it like three times, was corrected each time, and thought, hey, you know what I should do here? Call again and say the exact same thing, even though I already got fucking my ass handed to me. So I'm making the executive decision and telling Andrew to go fuck himself. Dave is back to uh, for some reason. I'll just steal Dave in. Hey, Dave. Dave. <laughs> I'm sorry you hung Hello. up earlier. Are you, you good, man? <laughs> Dave, you good? Uh, can you hear me dave Dave? on the line i can i stole you up dave can you hear me dave this is jimmy do you hear me my god (laughs) what's happening let me return to q and bring him back i I heard dave a moment ago yeah dave can you hear me now well we love dave dave's a great guy we love dave up in here we hope that dave has a good night but we can't hear dave anymore all right. Sorry, buddy. I'll still leave lines open for a fucking like somebody who's going to come correct. I'm not going to waste fucking time on. I'd rather let Charles Charles back on than fucking Andrew. I hope you guys can control yourselves. Turns out I can't. You fuck face. Oh, my God. I'm not in the mood for that kind of bullshit today. You know why? I'll show you why I'm not in the mood. <clears throat> Do I look like I'm in the mood? Look at me. I don't know if I'm Dilla Hunty or Heisenberg. I'm not in the fucking mood. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here's some new uh All right, let's let's get get another chat. If if God doesn't exist, nothing's wrong with your rape. That's me making fun of Andrew. Fuck you, Andrew. Five dollars from Anastasia. I'm a new atheist and am not sure how to deal with the guilt from my past actions. Beyond apologizing and trying to rectify the situ- rectifying the situation, what can I do? Well, uh, Anastasia, I am of the opinion that forgiveness uh, should come with some recognition of error and some attempt to atone for that error. Way too many people have spent a decade in prison without ever admitting that what they did was wrong. You know, I I would I don't think that people need to necessarily go to prison for the things they do wrong. I think I, I would be happy if they just understand what they're doing and trying to fix it. I've often had to tell people, okay, well, regardless whatever I may have done or said, how can I make it right? Because that's that's the important thing, isn't it? Yeah, I I have so. the exact same with you. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Putting so many people on prison who aren't a threat to society. I understand in some ways, like people yeah. who murder and stuff. Even if you're sure they would never murder anybody else again, there's some amount of like justice has to be revenge and in a way, a sort of like revenge when it's okay uh, kind of situation. And I don't believe in the death penalty. So if if the justice for killing is being killed, then then life in prison is the best we got. I'm I'm going to have to do a presentation on that because it was a time when I did support the death penalty. And I think my transition into changing my opinion about that is a speech I've never that I've never given, but I should. Could you give me what's your bullet point of the main reason you no longer uh, support it? Have I told you mine? No, I haven't. You haven't. I'm, I'm keen to hear it. Uh, I literally, I have no problem with the thought that some people deserve to die. Uh, I have a problem with giving a government the power to end the life of its own citizens ever. 
you can. I, I have no, there is no way I would ever say it is okay for a government to, to decide who it can and can't kill amongst its own people. Maybe it's a slippery slope fallacy. I don't know. If I walked in on a person sexually abusing a child, I could see myself murdering them and feeling completely justified. But I don't believe uh, a person should have the right uh, or, or the government should have the right to kill its own citizens. When I was a young man, I could, I can, I, I, I've been in a number of situations where I could see justification for killing somebody in situations like, you know, what vaguely similar to what you're talking about. There's moments of outrage and, and maybe it's justified when we're controlled by testosterone levels or whatever that, 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 that could happen. But the problem that I have is that the death penalty is not a punishment. It's not a deterrent. People who are religious, which is a most, you know, most people in prison are religious people. Their God has already forgiven them. Their God is going to praise them and go, is going to reward them once they get out of their body. And the prison, you know, the, the executioner is just going to facilitate their escape into God's hands. Yeah. No, no punishment there. Yeah. Uh, also, there's a person who made a point that's the same point that um, Penn of, or Teller from Penn and Teller had made. Wait, which one's the silent one? Penn, the one who talks, had made on his uh, episode of Bullshit about the death penalty, um, which is that if there's even a chance of putting one person to death wrongly, wrongly putting one person to death is too high a chance to take it on. Because I do think of a, a, a person wrongly put to death that there's not. Or a and you know that uh, in general, there's not much that's worse than that. You know that our Texas governor, uh, once upon a time, Rick Perry, yeah. who was governor before you got here, but uh, right. he he executed somebody who had been exonerated, and it didn't matter. He had him executed anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew tried to call back. <laughs> I was, I don't, Hey, I don't know if he hung up or if the screener hung up on him, but I would have, I would have connected it just to say, go fuck yourself again. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny thing, Jimmy. I, I have, I have infinite patience when I think that the person is sincere and the person that was, that was talking about, you know, being a Hovind, Hovindophile at first, I thought there's no way that this is his real position, but that I remember the recent debate that I had where that, that guy was, that was totally his real position. Now he was being completely dishonest. I kept proving him wrong over and over again, and he refused. He would not ever admit that he was wrong about any damn thing. It was always a projection. It always had to be thrown back on me. Well, let's talk about your errors for a minute. What you mean before you admit yours? Let's yeah. let's have you admit yours, and then we'll talk about mine. But he can't. They won't ever. Yeah. So that's my problem. The, the religious belief is not sin. Sincere. They always talk about their sincerely held belief. It's not sincere. You want to make believe. That's it. Right. Well, and, then, and you'll tell any lie necessary, to, even to yourself, in order to in order to pretend. So the the thing that I also feel like reminding some people of, cause, and look, if there are going to be some people who think that I cut in too much and I shouldn't, and whatever, that's fine. That's what you think, and you should run your channel the way you run your channel. I'll run mine the way I run mine. I will say. Uh, Aaron, what's the maximum number of calls you do in a month? Like, let's say we have you on two shows. That's going to be like, what, 10 calls at the most in a month, right, uh, on average? Uh, you know, Dillahunty does two shows a week, so he's getting something like 40 calls a month. I'm either in or monitoring over 100 calls a month as the producer of this show. So not only do I have a point of reference of I'm pretty sure James has actually called in before, was a troll last time, and last time we called him in on it, he had a very different reaction, which he seems to have refined this time. Uh, but yeah. also, my troll dar for specifically callers isn't <laughs> infallible. I'm not saying it'll never be wrong. Maybe today it was wrong with James, but it's pretty fucking good, that troll dar. Uh, I'm not, so, I'm not challenging you. No, not you. Yeah. I'm not. I'm more I, I was at the same thing. When I first read that thing, there's yeah. no way this guy's real. Yeah. By the end, when yeah. he was being very contrite, I still didn't think he was real. Uh, yeah. I don't know why we have an atheist queued up for hold. We said no more atheists tonight. Sorry, Anthony. We're going to drop you, bud. Uh, uh, I don't know why, uh, why that call was made to let through. 
I see a number that I recognize the area code that I think might be Andrew trying to call again a different way that he won't get right. But I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> anyway. A question uh, about Aaron's recent debate and a quote about how we are weird monkey fish. Yeah. Which that is, might have been interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Another day, but it's already nine o'clock. We've been doing this for two hours. I'm not I'm not settling for anything less than a fucking create a yak at this point. Yep. Uh, uh. Anyway, here's another one. You want me to read right, it or you want so, uh, $5 from Lost Fan. I watched those Kent Hovind videotapes back in the day. I knew they were BS when I was 10 years old. <laughs> I, do you feel alone in your family? Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I when I was a child, I would, recognize, I would readily recognize bullshit that, that my family fucking believes. I felt- I, and, and some of them... Some of them, I'm sorry to say, are still that way. I was trying to tell my my 80 year old mother about The Last of Us, and she couldn't tell which parts were not real. When I t- when I tell her that there's a there's a fungus called cordyceps that actually does make you know zombie cicadas and zombie ants, that that part's real. But in the movie, they say that there's this mutation so they can also take over people. She thinks that it's taking over people. I had to explain it three times. Which part's real? Which part's just a movie? What do you do with people like that? Yeah. The Last of Us isn't a movie. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. It's, it's a TV series. Each episode is an hour and a half. I'm that's sorry. True. Fair. That's, that's, that's a fair. full length feature have, film. <laughs> have you been watching it, by the way? No, I haven't. Uh, I saw. No, I, I no wanted spoilers. to see how the. I wanted to see how the whole thing began, so I watched yeah. the first several minutes, but it's, but that was it. It's incredible, and uh, I'm not going to tell you why. Nobody in the chat. We don't do spoilers of stuff, especially that's going on. But episode three, if you don't break down in absolute tears and devastation, you. you I don't trust you as a human okay. anymore. I've got to tell you, that was the thing that sold me on it. That was the thing that made me want to see it was because Seth Andrews tweeted that the last episode, he was talking about episode three. He said episode three of The Last of Us had more poignancy and more emotive uh, qualities. I don't remember exactly how he phrased it than the entire first season of Walking Dead. I, uh, I agree. I I have not cried that. So first of all, I'm one of those toxically uh, toxic masculinity prevents me from crying in most situations. Uh, it's definitely something I hold on to and don't and I don't like to cry in front of people and all that sort of shit. TV and movies for some reason can choke me up better than real life can. This is the first time I have cried where you cry like you don't just have tears. Your 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 breath is doing that thing. Like it is devastatingly sad. Uh, I, that is the hardest I have cried in a long, long time. You know what I'm talking about? The thing like like kids do. Just like <laughs> like you're yeah. You got you. It's audible. Um, and it is it is just it's but it's sad in the in the most beautiful way. It's a very beautifully sad thing. Uh, I, I get that. So they, yeah. they have more budget than Game of Thrones. They have some of the <laughs> same people from Game of Thrones. Yeah. And they have some of the same writers from yeah. Game of Thrones. So I guess that what that tells us is don't watch the last episode. You know what's you know what's a little sad is the uh I, I hope that she's gotten better, much like how Millie Bobby Brown used to be a flat earther and supposedly she isn't anymore. Uh that's also the case with um the girl the, who's the main character of The Last of Us, apparently she has like a, a, a YouTube channel from when she was like 13 or something defending creationism and hasn't updated wow. it in a couple of years, uh, but was like a yuck. And that's that's very sad. And I hope that she grows out well, that of that. Millie Bobby Brown thing really irritated me because I was always a big Godzilla fan. Yeah. But that Godzilla versus I mean, and I realized there's never going to be they're never going to do Godzilla correctly. They had a chance to do it in 1998 when they did. Tristar's abomination instead. Yeah, they had a chance then to do Godzilla correctly. Like nobody's ever going to do it correctly. But uh, so every Godzilla movie is just going to be shut up. 
I'm on a show. Damn it. <laughs> so <laughs> the thing goes off every every few minutes. It, it just every time he hears a sound. But anyway, so I, I understand every Godzilla movie is going to be bad. But the last one with, with Godzilla versus King Kong, the remake of that, yeah, where they were celebrating conspiracy theorists, yeah, and they were actually talking about fluoridation being a communist plot, that kind of shit. I'm like, really? Yeah. Did we just did we just break a new threshold for how bad a Godzilla movie can be? Oh man, you got to watch Last of Us because there's actually a pretty funny line related to what you're saying now, but it's a spoiler. But there's a point where like somebody basically says like you believed this conspiracy and the other person was like but that is true and they're like well now it's true but it wasn't back when you believed it it's it's this really funny moment that i won't get into the specifics and spoil anything but it's really funny okay <laughs> stop atheist stop calling in what the fuck are you doing and then okay here uh, andrew why the fuck did would you call back Andrew, you're on. I just want to make. Oh yeah, because yeah, you said yeah, I wasn't sincere. No, um, I didn't, I don't know if you were the one we said was insincere. I just told you to go fuck yourself. And let me just go ahead and say, go fuck yourself. And I dropped it. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's another one. Did you really? Yes. Fuck Andrew. I'm not gonna. If I tell okay. somebody he's not gonna get on, I'm not gonna let them call back in and do it. Okay. He fucking he broke the rules. He can try another night. Uh, but okay, not, what was that the, the guy that was the Kent Hovind supporter? No, Andrew no, was okay. the guy who said, if you two can control yourselves. And last oh, time I call, I'm the guy who called in yeah. three times to say, uh, if, if God doesn't exist, if God doesn't exist, then nothing's wrong with rape. That guy. Yeah. Ne never mind. Fuck him. Yeah. And then, uh, okay. uh, sorry, Dave did call back one last time. Dave, we got, we got to stop taking the call, but if you, if you can hear us now, we'll, we, we'll, we'll hear you. Yeah. yeah sorry Dave, about you there? My phone is on like a, hello. Yeah. No worries, Dave. We got hello, you. I can hear you. Next. Um, so yeah, what about that contact information? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you want to know where to send it? Uh, the links, uh, yeah. is Aaron at gmail.com good enough? Oh, fine. Just broadcast my email address. <laughs> Don't you broadcast your email address? You told people my, no, you think I want it. You, you think told I people want my home stuff? address. <laughs> 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 that one time. Uh, okay. Sorry. I shouldn't have said Aaron, <laughs> the email address that if anyone was just guessing for, for Aaron, <laughs> the, the most hello? obvious one <laughs> yeah yeah hello can you hear us dave oh yeah sorry my my phone keeps cutting out because it's on like a low battery mode and just wants okay. to like shut off anyway sorry <laughs> no worries uh so, yeah i um, thought Ryan, it was funny i thought it was it? funny the way you yeah. called in before and then hung up i thought that was a deliberate joke Hilarious. and i thought i laughed so thank you. Yeah, I, I thought it'd be funny if I hung up. And yes, I did say go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thank so. you. Thank you, Dave. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, there is an old uh, an old debate pal, somebody that you debated before waiting in the queue to talk to you again. I'm going to let the screening finish, but I think we have another good call lined up. So, Dave, we're going to let you go. You can tell me to go fuck myself again if you like. All right. Go fuck yourself. Thanks, buddy. Uh, and then I'm going to let that get screened. We'll do a couple of super chats while this gets screened. Um, okay. 999 from Bryn Poo KC. Jimmy yeah. wins. That's true. I think that was clear back during the Ashley call. $10 from P Isaac Hildebrandt. Of course, God has limited resources. That's why he needs your money. Deserves $10. I'm sure you'll do better things with it than God would. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Thanks. if you're committed like a Mormon, you wouldn't just give us ten dollars. You give us ten percent before taxes. We had to do before taxes. Can you believe that shit, Aaron? My family really? is ten percent before taxes, and you paid that bill before yeah. any other bill. Yeah, my 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 mother did her tithing at ten percent gross. She's smarter than my family. Here's another one for you, buddy. Okay, so five dollars from SB Golden Cap. Is there any basis for life to derive in a way that it could survive in environments we would not say cannot support life currently? Yeah, there. For example, Archaea 
are extremophiles. They're like bacteria, but they're capable of surviving in extreme environments. And archaea probably was the first life on Earth because it was an extreme environment on Earth initially. And then, you know, things got comfortable and soft later on. We, uh, we've got a call. Do you, you see that call on the line? You ready for it? Do you want it? Yeah. All right. We're going to talk. We're going to bring in Bernard, who is a person without pronouns. That's incredible. I suppose use the default they, thems for Bernard. Did I know? No, totally not. Oh, what pronouns would you prefer then, Bernard? No, it's not prefer. I just don't, I prefer not to have pronouns behind my name on a screen. Oh, gotcha. Well, I don't know how to broadcast to the audience how they should refer to you in the chat. We'll, we'll figure that, it out. that would worry. mean that the default they them. they them yeah they them or you can just use Bernard's name that's uh Bernard does Bernard wants to do things on on Bernard's own terms so uh, they will be respected in that way <laughs> uh, you can use well, they them or... they, so you have to say Bernard will be expected <laughs> totally totally expected in... Bernard okay. they well no they them is the default the the one for everybody and Bernard otherwise but anyway now that we've gotten past the pronouns thing. Uh, go ahead and chat with them, uh, Aaron. Yeah, you well, you haven't got, you haven't got past the pronoun thing, thing, but okay. Yeah, so the, the question posed like, here is seeing if Aaron is thing, consistent in his beliefs. So seeing if Aaron is consistent Pardon? in his beliefs based on our... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to read your question. Seeing if Aaron is consistent in his beliefs based on our prior debate in 2015. First of all, I don't know who this is, and yeah. two... I'm I'm curious what my beliefs are because I'm not aware that I have any. Yeah, yeah, of course you're not aware. That's okay. Um, I was wondering because we we had an uh, we had a debate in like 2015 on League of Reason. I don't know if you remember that. Do you remember that or on 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 my on the the the, the, the website League of Reason? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we had a debate. Anyway, you said you go, you you typed in, you could prove something without evidence. Would you still, would you accept that as a position or what? I doubt very much that I would have said that. It's not a doubt. It's maybe fact, if you gave like me you, some you context. Maybe if you gave me some context. There is no context. It's like you wrote, you wrote. Um, our deal was I could prove something without ev evidence. No, I would not have said that. Yeah, well, okay. But you could screenshot it. It's on League of Reason. It's, it's there. Did you, you screenshot it, it? I Yeah, I screenshotted it. I'm trying to like... I got I, I'd like to see a actually. link to it because I, I don't know who you are. I don't remember this conversation. I would not have said just the statement that I, that, that my ascertain that, that, that I claim that I can prove something without evidence unless we're talking about something specific where logic would be sufficient to prove it and so I don't need evidence well, maybe okay, if it was if you, some... if you go to legal reason and you search Aaron Raw Bernard and then you go okay. uh, advanced search I think no not advanced okay. search I think it just comes up but it might be because I searched it before and, okay. and now I'm trying to find it. So, so what is the oh, what is the phrase? It. What is the phrase exactly that I'm looking for there? If I were to do that okay, later, well, and so I'm not page, doing it on the show. Page six. Page six. And then you see, yes, you said it. And you're like, I don't have to provide evidence to prove something. And then I kind of laugh oh, at oh, that, so and then you stop talking. Oh, so the opposite to me. message. I don't have to provide oh, evidence boy. to prove something. So it was so that the context there is that I don't have to prove something. Okay, try not to analyze it too much until I get the actual quote. I uh, I just thought it was kind of funny. And then the funny thing is, you said to me in the beginning of this debate, you said after the debate, I am not going to be a creationist. You're going to deconvert me. Okay, so th this was one of those options where I, I, I was going to explain the evolution to you, get you to understand it using a Socratic method wherein you answer every question or point posed to you, and then we move on to the next level based on that. 
I, I right? have to jump in and just make uh, a suggestion. No. Bernard, you sound like a whiny little bitch. So why don't you just actually propose something that you two disagree on as opposed to, hey, here's something that I recall you saying and the way I want to say it. And there's, you know, I'm saying there are screenshots, but I don't have it pulled it up. Why don't you actually just propose a debate topic and debate on the topic instead of whining about the last time you were on? And by the way, I also wanted to stop in to make sure that you check the screen. Don't turn the sound on. Let's not make it annoying. I updated the Chiron to make sure that it, it resembles something that you're probably much more comfortable with. So it's it's there for you. Oh, I, I probably won't even watch it, but that's okay. Like, I, I uh, like whatever, I guess. If that's your perception of the conversation, I understand it. I was just saying, I was just coming here just to explain to Mr. Raw that he told me that after the conversation I had with him, that I was going to be an evolutionist. And yeah. if, he if said you can I go through the parameters that was, but I, laid, but I'm yeah, that was laid out, but I'm not. And, and the requirement is, the requirement is that within a couple dozen mutual exchanges, wherein you have to address, you have to answer every direct pointer query then you will be an evolutionist for a proud evolutionist for the rest of your life and will be embarrassed that you were ever a creationist the problem that i've had with this is i've issued this challenge and i've tried, tried to walk this through with dozens of people over the years and with one ex singular exception all of them have refused repeatedly refused to answer any fucking question they just won't they never I, concede I anything not even, the def, not, not even the definition of what evolution is nothing so that i, I have to repeat I, I the same question I, six or seven times and you still don't answer it i'm like okay i'm done i've repeated this question a half dozen times i am no, under no a further obligation this discussion is over you didn't meet the standard I, so i'm under no no obligation to continue but if you did I, if I, you did walk through and, and answer the questions appropriately and so that you, you, you just answer the questions at all so we can get to the next step so that you understand level one, we get to level two, then you understand level two, we get to level three and you'll get there. But I can never get anybody else after I, level one. I, I understand. I understand. But the thing is, um, like the way the way we were defining evolution in that argument was we were defining or you were defining macroevolution as change at or above the species level yeah which is the standard and definition then, according to every academic institution look it up right well okay okay that's fine you can bring along all the academics it doesn't matter but what i'm saying well, is, yeah if, if that then, is if, so, if if evolutionary biologists invented this word and says this is what this word means and then some creationist fucktard comes along and says, no, I think it means one kind turning into another fundamentally different kind so that elephants give birth to pine trees. I'm sorry, that's just stupid and wrong. And you have to admit that that's the wrong definition and this is what the word really means. Like, I understand why you're angry, but the thing is- we I don't were, like being we lied to. Discussing a, a I don't know why creationists and then you, okay you, with you went sideways on the definition because I said when you say change at the species level, you're pretty much uh -huh. defining microevolution as well. No, I'm not. I'm sorry that you don't oh, know what well, microevolution okay, is either. That's what you think. So yeah, I, I, there, I there are that's there are what you want to think. But well, it's not what I want to think. <laughs> it's what we can it's what we can prove right now. Go to evolution one oh one from UC Berkeley. Look up the fucking definition. It'll give it to you. That's the yeah, easiest one to find. To, to I can give you a me. half a dozen other. I can give you a half a dozen other ones if you want to you know, wait to where I can share links. I can share links to other academic institutions, all of which give the no, same I, definition. I'll, I'll read, I will read absolutely zero of your links. but Okay, like, so you, you don't want an appeal. So like, you know you're wrong. You're just not going to admit you're wrong. No, it's false dichotomy. I don't know I'm wrong. I know I'm right. Oh, you, no, you can't know that you're right because I know that I'm right and of I know that I you're know. wrong because I can prove that you're no, wrong. I know you're mad right now. No, no okay. okay. You're like trying not to you know, you're you such a right little now. Little I've told bitch. you to look it up. You won't look it up. You know that you're wrong. You, that's why you won't look it up because you're a chicken shit, want to make believe something you know is not true. You wow, know how to name, prove that you're wrong. Name. You won't do it.
Hey, we'll the stop. Names. All right, Bernard, you get you keep mentioning the swearing and the names. names. Well, fuck off. You you don't want us to swear. You keep mentioning the swearing and the name calling. We'll agree to not swear as soon as yeah, you give you us your pronouns. Your names. Hey Bernard, fuck face. As he soon as you give me. us hey fuck face, as soon as you give us your pronouns, we'll stop we'll stop swearing at you. Oh my goodness. Well like it doesn't bother me. I'm just thinking your audience, you're getting sworn at like I'm on these debate sites and the second you if if, if you're on like a personal attack they know you're wrong. Well, how do we know? How do how do we know, Bernard? How do we know which of us is right? How can everybody listening to this well, know which one of us is right and which of us is Bernard? Okay. Well, the guy shielding you from me right now, the one who jumps in at last time. Wait, wait, the of, one the one who's he, not shielding you because you're, you're right helping. here. You're bouncing against my armor right now. Go, go ahead. How do we know? How does everybody listening to you right now Find out that you're full of shit. How do they? How do they do that? How do we figure out who's right here? Uh, no, like okay, you kind of have it back to front here. Uh, like if we could keep it on the argument. There's like a way saying, to find out that I'm right and you're full of shit. How do we do that? Uh, time travel a million years back. We're talking about the definition of a word. Oh, we can't do how that. How do we? That's right. How okay, do we no, figure I out what saying, is? How do we figure out what the word macro evolution means? Whether it means what all the academic institutions mean or all well, the evangelicals in, opinion, in the trailer park say it means? Well, I definitely don't I don't pick your version. Oh, so you, you know, use the wrong definition like you, on purpose to no, lie about what the word means. No, no, no. You're just trying to go off on a self-righteous rant here. How do people no, no, find out? I don't pick a definition Who, which like of, that. Which of our definitions I'm is correct? Trying, how, does, how does everybody find out? Who's right? Because there's a way to know. I'm, well, Am I'm I trying using the right to answer definition? that, but you keep going. Or are you making the and right going. How, how do we? How do we find out? All right. All right. If, you're, if you're honestly asking me the question, you kind of give me some time, I would think. Okay. How do we find All out I'm which saying, definition is correct? All right. If you quit cutting me off uh, just the last time. Okay. All nope, I'm, I'm going to cut you off now. Is that... <laughs> okay. Okay. Now you can give it, you little bitch. <laughs> oh, he's, he, he, wow. He's amazing. <sighs> I, I agree. Thank you. to be like that little guy. But okay. Oh, you would, you right. would love the my life. It's much better than yours, bitch. Of course it and is. And so is mine. The macro evolution is easy to explain. I just think to myself, like, if you follow the uh, logic of, like, godless evolution, then you'd have to say one parent preceded the other into like way back in time. So that would mean that at some point in time, a chimpanzee at the zoo and us share a grandparent. Correct? I love that. Doesn't you, have anything to do with the question I just asked. That's what I love. Art, yeah, I love no, that I'm trying you to asked define, a question. I'm trying to find I, love that, I love that you asked a question and said, "How do we do this?" And he goes, "If you'd stop cutting me off, I'd tell you how everyone else would see I'm yeah. right and you're wrong." And instead of saying know, that, I'm he trying, goes, I'm, "When I, I think about it, I just think about the okay. godless." Oh my goodness! So we're both using different definitions. How do we determine which of our definitions is correct? I would think okay, I'm that trying we to just look it up. Okay, listen. If I said to you, if we go back, then that means that a chimpanzee and us, we share a grandpa. That's true, right? Like, I mean, you can't agree to Answer that. Then I don't know the question, what version dipshit. of evolution you're thinking Fucking about. Fucking Christ! But, true or okay, false? Okay, Aaron, are you true you or false? This guy or not? True or false? The moon is made of cheese. Because I feel like you think the answer is clitoris or something crazy. You don't know how to answer there, a, there's a beautiful know, Aaron, question. Aaron, you, you have to control this guy or not? Like, there, there, there's classic literature that you really ought to read. It's like Alice through the Looking Glass, and she's talking to Humpty Dumpty, and Humpty Dumpty is talking about what glory means. And it, it, he says that glory means a knockdown argument. And Alice says, but that's not what glory means. Now, how do we determine which one of them is correct? Is, is Alice correct that, that, that glory does not mean a knockdown argument? Or how do we determine which, is Humpty Dumpty correct in his definition? Would, would say maybe we just look up what the definition of glory is? That would be my suggestion. What is your suggestion to figure out which one of them is using the correct definition? 
Well, okay, well, I would first suggest talking about Humpty Dumpty when we're talking about evolution is probably wrong. Like, that would be my first thought. But And secondly... We're talking about the definition analogy, of a word. How do we determine whether I have yeah, the correct definition or whether dumb fuck has the correct definition? Which is it? I'm trying to get there. You're never going to get there, All are I'm you? Saying, well, yeah, because I've said it three Tell times, but you keep going. Tell the audience how okay. to figure out which one is the correct okay. definition. Can they just Google okay. to look up the definition from an academic ready, institution? Or the audience. That's what I would say. What would you tell the audience to do okay, to find I, out what the true definition of macro-revolution is? Okay, I'm trying to tell the audience. So okay. what I would say is, according to evolution at the moment, we have what's called, like, if you go back to, like, the chimp human ancestor, then we can Holy say... Holy shit, you was suck a, at this! Bernard, try, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Parents. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to teach you how to do this. Say this. Say this phrase. The way we would find the it. correct definition. Am I arguing with Aaron or you? Shut the fuck up. You're talking to me right now, bitch. I don't know I, who Aaron is. Okay, well, yeah, Aaron, who the fuck like is if... Aaron? You're talking to Jimmy right now. Okay. Yeah. Je and Jimmy's going to walk you through this because you're so bad at it. You need someone to hold your hand like a little baby. You, this is how you're going to answer his question correctly. You're going to say the way to find the correct definition of macro evolution oh. is, and then you're going to complete that sentence and it'll, and that will, you'll get it. You, you might've done something. Give it a shot. The way to answer who has the correct definition of macroevolution or to find the correct definition of macroevolution. Give it a shot there, Bernard. Give it a go. Just trying to answer it like my way here. Nobody I, I cares about your way. At you. you dishonest fuckface. I am. I am answering. What, what is the correct definition of macroevolution and how can we verify that? Okay, well, I'm, I'm more pushing towards how to verify it because so, so you're more pushing toward is, not answering the question so the question no, is i'm pushing toward how, how do we to verify figure out it. which is the correct definition well, how, how do we how do we find yeah, that by, out by, by verifying it by by, by finding verifying a method to the verify. definition how do you verify what the correct definition is would you say look it up well, I'm trying to explain. There's been like a hundred. How much explanation can there be? You it. either look it up and say, "Oh, Aaron was right," or you don't look it up because Bernard can't admit when or he's wrong. Aaron is wrong. Hey, Bernard, how many hours are in a day? Like, uh, do I have to answer your? See, this your is guy what I knew. There, Aaron, no, I, I, I wanted to show you. First of all, just so you know, you're on my channel, motherfucker. Aaron, this is the host of this show. But your little whiny thing of like, do I have to? Or do you control this man? You don't even clearly know where the fuck you are. And I think that might be true of you, also generally. I don't know that you know where you physically are in space right now. And I'm not surprised that when asked a simple question, you also don't know how to just answer it because you can't do it with the question. You hear? I was I was expecting for me to say how many hours in a day, and you say potato. That's I what you've Jimmy, been doing so I far. I think Jimmy that you're correct because I've talked to a lot of creationists, and that does seem to be the case. They don't know where they are in time or space. Yeah. They don't know what things were invented after or before what other things. They can't tell me what state or country lies north, south, east, and west of them. They can't even do that. They're utterly lost. That's why absolutely that's, everything about that's where why they the are. That's called AD. Uh, yeah, date is dates are BC and AD, so it's kind of yeah. Yeah, you you know why? It's you know like, why that is? <laughs> you know why that is? Oh, you, I you know. I, I fully expect you to have some sort of answer. So well, yeah, you should because I'm smarter <laughs> than you, you so something. I'm gonna. Yeah. So in in I the 1500s, in the 1500s, Pope Gregory the Third decided he didn't like the Julian calendar because it didn't focus on Jesus. So Pope Gregory decided to create his own calendar and backdate it to when he thought Jesus was born. But he ran into a bit of a problem because Jesus was supposedly born both before 4 BC when Herod died and also oh, after God. the census of Curinus, which was 10 fucking years later. And there was no way to put him in the middle. So, without any way of, of, of reconciling oh, this contradiction, Pope Gregory the Third decided to just pick a number in the middle and call that the year zero. 
So actually, Jesus totally. would have been you know, born. It's, it's it, like you're in his head. It's what? It's like you're in his head. It's like he reads books, motherfucker. Give it a shot someday. <laughs> it's like Aaron Christ. is there. Jesus Christ. Who's hey, Aaron? There. Do you see elephants giving birth to oak trees in the room with you right now? Yeah. Uh, that's the other guy. I was on. I was. I was listening when that guy said when that guy came on. I actually liked that guy. I bet you did. Well, that's that's too bad. But anyway, how do we figure out what a word means? If we're gonna hey, if Ken, we're gonna Ken use Holden common language, good, by the way, if that guy's still listening, huh? It, when we use common language, how do we determine whether we're using our our verbiage correctly? So if you like, for example, like, if you I say that if no you reason. say that glory means a knockdown argument, how do we determine whether that's right or wrong? Like, I see no knockdown argument that proves that there's a grand But how do we determine whether the definition is correct? To me or Kemp thousands how of years ago, or millions of years ago. Tell whether the definition is correct. How to tell whether the definition is correct. Okay, well, you're obviously asking about macroevolution, so I'll, I'll say it again. Oh, I'm obviously asking how to define a fucking word. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you on to something you've probably you've obviously never heard of. And it's gonna sound really pornographic when I tell you because it starts with the word dick, but it's called a dictionary. Have you ever heard of one of these? They, they, I'm sure they didn't teach you about these in homeschool. But you can use yeah, a Christian dictionary. The first one. You, you can, yeah, I know, I know. And that's why some of the words in there are wrong. Like animal, for example. There's not a dictionary that gets the definition of animal right because all of them say that that animal is, includes a single-celled protist, which it doesn't because oh, animals now you're, by now you're arguing with the dictionary. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah I am. Can we just take it back to evolution? dictionaries are written by Christians, and that's why you'll never get a, cr a proper definition of abiogenesis or spontaneous generation or the definition of animal for because there's just some words well, that, you know, religious biases... We'll put in there, but if you get into biological definitions, totally, you're totally, talking about scientific totally. terms, then you, yeah. Would you accept a definition from a dictionary to describe faith? Uh, I, pretty much anything, like when, like if, because I'm trying to keep it on evolution, you know? That's a, yeah, that was the answer to every question. single topic. So is the answer so yes I or mean, was the answer uh, no? Would you accept? A, a, a regular dictionary's definition of the word faith is that is that yes or is that no? Um, the answer is like I'm trying to keep it on evolution. The answer is I'm. It, like, the answer is know. I'm trying. Okay, so 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 yes, you would accept that definition. If I would read you the definition of faith from a dictionary, would you accept that? Yes or no? Oh, um, I I don't make deals like. There's no deal okay, here. So you don't I, I'm just know saying, like, what a dictionary is. You don't know what words mean. No, I, I really so you didn't can't say that. focus on a conversation at all. In what way did you think this was your I, show I to set that. the I was, terms and I'm direction? Just to keep it on evolution. Jesus Christ. Well, we're not. I'm fuck trying you, to keep it on face. evolution too, but wow. you don't know what words mean. So that's going to make it a little not difficult. Really. You're you don't know what evolution donkey. means. You don't know what macroevolution <laughs> means. Donkey. And, and Gregorian calendar. Yeah, I mean, you shit. don't know yeah. how to look up a definition. You don't know how to figure out what words mean. Yeah, well, Aaron, you don't know how to stay on a topic. You don't know Who how to keep Aaron. Aaron? His name is Aaron. Jesus fucking okay, Christ. Aaron. Sorry. Fucking. It. It's spelled Aaron. Who are you to condescend no, it's not. To anybody? No, how many A's do you see in my name? How many? How many are there? Uh, one. One. I don't know. So every Aaron, Aaron I know, and I always said Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. So you've been saying the wrong word all the time because you never know because you don't you don't look up things and you don't read things because you're fucking stupid. No. But I when, suggest, I say, when I say to the guy Aaron, he doesn't come around and bite my head off saying you're saying my name's wrong. Who, who's Aaron? <laughs> kind of like that. He literally told you yeah, his name was saying, Aaron like, multiple times when before I say in this Aaron episode. To an Aaron, Shut the fuck up. Whose show do you think this is? Shut the fuck up, you little bitch. If he. No one can hear you. I muted you, and I'm watching your little bars going. He told you multiple times his name is Aaron. The show, he was introduced as Aaron. You have not gotten it right once, and you can't identify how to use a dictionary. I don't know how you think you're winning anything here. I'm going to unmute you in a moment. But before I do, I just want to say... 
You're a whiny little bitch. Okay, am I still muted? No, I can hear you again, unfortunately. Oh, okay, okay. Apparently, apparently, he likes to use whiny little bitch a lot. Apparently, that's his big well, thing. Well, yeah, you, you do give justification for that quite often. When so, I hear a whiny how little bitch, I'm going to agree with him. You're on his show. <laughs> Not biased yeah, at How all. do we determine which of us is using the language correctly? Okay, if we can just take it to evolution... Yeah, like, get, get, let's do know. that. But let's but let's first make sure that we're using the correct words because you don't know what evolution no, means. There's no and you don't know sure what macroevolution means, and you don't know what microevolution yes, means. So we're gonna yes, no, do. you don't. So we're gonna. What, what, how do you know? Yes, I do. How, how, let's yes, I give do. me a definition. Show me where we can look it up. No, I I know I know what it means, Aaron. A a a. All right, well then show me. Whatever. Fuck. Prove it. Prove prove to me that you know what it means. Okay, we're gonna I'm look it up. I'm trying to prove it. All right, ready. Okay. And tell me, tell me where we where when we can look take, up this definition of yours. Where is it? All right, everywhere. So it's okay. it's everywhere. Now, so dictionary.com, to... Toyota.com oh, will sure, have the whatever. definition of macroevolution in it. You, you said There's everywhere. So Toyota.com will have that. What? Oh wow, wow! I can see you why said you're confused a bit. If you look at Toyota, so, so in this coffee cup, I will see the definition. Of macro evolution, I don't see it in here. Yeah, so maybe that's kind of why you're confused about everywhere. it, Aaron. Uh, Aaron. Well, Bernard, maybe you didn't so, answer so stupidly, that... Aaron. I'm going to encourage you well, to once looking, again you're looking at shut the fuck up. Don't try and talk over me, bitch. Aaron, uh, I've muted him again. Uh, uh, I would encourage you to give him one more try to go down the because this isn't this isn't a formal debate. This isn't a democracy. You do the exercise as is laid out, and R and I would suggest that if he refuses again, just hang up on the bitch. Okay, well, I was having fun with it. But, oh, I was okay. too. About twenty six minutes, and I've only got so many chuckles yeah. in me. Yep, and this guy's really totally, pissed. totally. <laughs> okay, so well, I was uh, just where, where can I look up I the definition? Uh, am I muted? Am I muted again? <laughs> no, I can still hear you. So, where can I look up the definition you're using? Okay, not in the bottom of your coffee cup, uh, Aaron. Okay, you know, so where can I crazy. find it? Where can I find not it? Not in Toyota. And not I, in Toyota. So, so, don't to tell me where I said, it's I said, not. I said, I, said, I, I think we can, we can spend all I day telling everywhere. you where it's not. I said where everywhere, it is. and I stand, I stand by that. I, I mean, oh, so if it you is in the bottom of my coffee, look in your coffee cup. So, But it's not in the bottom of my coffee cup, so it's not everywhere. So tell me where it is. You're introduced as the best English debater. Where where can oh, I look goodness. up this definition that you're using? Okay, well I'm gonna try to just go evolution, and if like if I get hung up on, well, you're not going to tell up. me where just I can up look up this definition. I won't hang up for you, but Jesus I already, Christ! I already told you, Aaron. I already you you told already you. told me, oh, hey. Aaron. Oh, you know what? Fuck off. Hey, uh, Bernard. Do you know what BCE correct... stands for? It means Bernard can't explain. And you know what <laughs> BC stands for? It stands for bitch collar. Later, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Are you dropping him? It's up to you. Yep. 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 He's done. <laughs> Later, douche. Oh, man. You dropped the whole that was, thing. I mean, that was stupid. <laughs> how, how, how can you ask? I couldn't ask a simpler question. Could I? Yeah. By the way, my, my, uh, I will cite my source now on BCE means. Bernard can't explain, and and BC means bitch collar. Uh, everywhere is my source. Actually, tell me, is it in the bottom of your coffee cup? I bet it is. <laughs> Look at your coffee cup. Tell me if it says bitch collar at the bottom. <laughs> oh, what a good. Okay, we can we can just do the supers now. <laughs> I had fun. Jesus Christ. That what a self-important, yeah. self-righteous douche. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Yeah. I had fun. Uh, did we already do this one? And if he seriously believed in his own position, that's scary. I know. I, I liked when he was starting to chuckle at the end as everyone was laughing at him as though he was getting anywhere, as though he looked like the winner. I am positive that some of the more embarrassing theist callers were would face palm and be like, oh my God, this guy does not represent. I know I called in and I said that the earth is 200 years old, 
but please don't let me in with this idiot. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Have we read this one already? Uh, let me see. Yes. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Go Five dollars from SB Golden Calf. Is there any basis for life to derive in a way that it could not? Yeah, we did. We we that was the uh, the Archaea uh, answer. Gotcha. It was something uh, cool, and I didn't understand it. So five dollars Canadian from Chris P. When Jimmy gonna wanna? Uh, so this is a reference to a show we do called Cause I Wanna, where it's like if on a day we don't have a show and I just decide I want to do one, uh, I would, you know, I would say there's a pretty good chance uh, that we'll run a Cause I Wanna probably this weekend, but it'll all depend. I'm working on some wood projects right now, and right now the thing I want to do is is work my wood. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. There's another for you. So ten dollars from uh, is this a different one? Ten dollars from RPG debunks. To understand how the universe could be infinite, theists have to understand gravitational time dilation and how it affects time on the quantum level. That's just my thought. Well, that's a thought. So I don't think, as as was evidenced by the previous caller, that's not something they deal with a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I man. Some of these questions are above my pay grade. I don't understand quantum anything, and I don't pretend uh, to like Deepak. Yeah, or... it, it, it it confuses me a little bit with the way that people use uh, quantum, uh, because as I understood it in in college, I mean, quantum energy states is just a different model for the the way the atom exhibits and en- changes energy states. So it's a different explanation of how the atom works. It's, a, it, I mean, we use and we still teach Bohr's model and Dalton's model because we have to, because there are practical applications in stoichiometry and so forth that those yeah. models work, even though we know that they're not entirely accurate. And the quantum model is said to be more accurate, but we can't use it in stoichiometry, can we? Right. So we still have to teach the other models. My favorite quantum physics joke is from Futurama where there's a race and it finishes and Farnsworth goes, no fair. You change the outcome by measuring it. (laughs) Five dollars from Ella. Aaron, which of your projects or achievements are you most proud of? Oh, that's a that's a that's a funny question because it was it's one that wasn't even my idea. It was my wife's idea. And it's better than, than any of the ideas that I had. It was the systematic classification of life. And when she suggested that I do it, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't getting it. And it was two or three episodes into it when I, when I, I started to see the value of what I was starting to put together. And I'm so embarrassed about that. <laughs> All right, the next one. $40 from Kia Star 67. What is something as you've been just sitting and thinking about things you thought might be something that would convince you of God slash gods, if any? Uh, might the U.S. become a theocracy at the rate we're going? Please no. Uh, I don't think we're going to become a theocracy, but we're going to get really close. Yeah, not more than we already are. <laughs> yeah, Um. I would like to think that we've reached a turning point on that, but I, I, I still see things getting worse before it gets better. Yeah, me too. And I don't necessarily th- see things getting a lot better because we've pushed back boundaries on when we should have acted to the point that uh, it's beginning to be pointless. What about the first half of the question? Something that would might convince you of a god or gods? Uh, a God. Yeah. A God could certainly convince me that it, that there would be gods, uh, because anything that's real doesn't require faith to believe it. Yeah. Uh, I've stolen Matt's answer. I don't actually know which evidence it would be that would get me, but if the God that has been proposed by Christians exists, he would know what would convince me, and I assume he would use that. Yep. 
And it, it would be so easy. I mean, because there's certain things we all know, right? Because it, it, it's not just that, that we have to believe. We don't, we wouldn't have to believe. Yeah. God could just like, you know, show up and not like a topless cat headed chick shows up in my bedroom, but <laughs> somebody just shows up. So some 60 foot tall or bigger, or somebody shows up and then the entire sky speaks to all of us at the same time, telepathically in every language and says the exact same information without any contradictions or variances. We would all know, right? And God knows how to communicate with everybody through their heart. Yeah. But simultaneously. I, but he doesn't I, ever do that. Does he? I think the point though, that we kind of got on with Ashley is actually, if everybody heard the same voice at the same time, saying the same information, that would be evidence of everybody hearing the same voice at the same time of the same information. It wouldn't actually be evidence of God yet. You would need more to confirm that, you know, whatever the Russians happened, are working on can't do it. If it happened on one day, yeah. you know, years ago, and that was the only time, maybe. But if God was real, it'd be like evolution. Evolution, we can, we can measure every day. We can see that shit all the time. Yeah, there's lots of things we can verify regularly over and over and over again so that we know. Yeah, but just the sound trick could literally be a trick is what I'm getting at. Like the idea oh, that no, you I, could I, potentially I vibrates everybody's eardrums with some sort of technology so they hear it, but they, it's not actually happening. Like, you know, I don't know that this technology could exist, but my my mind would first go to holy shit, I'm crazy. And then when I meet the second person who said they heard that, I'd go, Holy shit, we're both crazy. And then, and then it starts how to get worse. Some, how about when somebody tells you something about God and you say, No, they're wrong about that that oh God, you tell them something about God to correct them, and there's a way to know which of you is correct. Well, potato moon cheese clitoris. And not the answer of anything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Glory is a knockdown argument. Yeah. Hey, why? Why? What is? What is your op uh, opposition to universal determinism? I'm curious. I don't see anything as a, one. It certainly isn't devised for us. I but see an not, awful lot of point. That's what? not determinism. So the the concept, the way I explain it to other people is I, like... I understand that. Okay, go ahead. But you, you were asking for my explanation. Sure. So I don't see anything that's, that's, that's been designed for us. I see us as being incidental, accidental, and temporary. Mm -hmm. And so if, it, if, if, if determinism were the case, then we would be kind of a goal. And I see us as being something that will be passed by by something else. And then when something else comes along and maybe you can learn from our mistake, it'll be too late because it'll be out of time and the sun will supernova over our planet. So there just, there wasn't any mm -hmm. kind of plan. Yeah. That's, that's not determinism either though. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the way I would explain determinism isn't like there was a plan as a goal. It was that what happened is the only thing that could happen, could have happened. So uh, the exercise I do with a lot of people is like, the universe, we say, is 13.8 billion years. I don't need this much time, but let's just take that 0.8, the first 0.8, and we go to a brand new space, which I know doesn't make physics sense, but just uh, uh, take take the exercise as is, and we go, there's nothing here. We're going to create a universe here, and it's going to be exactly identical to that first 0.8 billion years to our universe. We're going to do it. Every atom's in the same place. Everything's exactly the same. Now move forward that exact same amount of 13 billion years are R and Ron and Jimmy Snow talking on Skeptalk in that universe too. And I say probably yes. Yeah, and I'm I'm saying no, because I'm I'm of the mind that if you go back in time, that any number of the any if if anything can change at all, then virtually everything would change over that period. And, and so this is where we disagree. I don't think anything can change. I don't think anything's stopping it from changing, except for that everything is a natural thing. Is an, it, 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 Most people get caught up on the experience of making choices because they feel like they actually had a choice to make a choice. And the experience of making choices and whether or not you were ever going to do anything besides the thing you were going to do are different. Uh, and I think that the universe, 13.8 billion years, actually, I don't even think it takes the first point eight. You just replicated the first second after the Big Bang in another location. 
the universe that follows is identical to the universe that we're in, in every way. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised when you don't want to argue. Prove, yeah. when, there's, when there's a way to prove which of us is right, then the argument will become interesting. It's Well, the concept is that this would be the ultimate form of total materialism and naturalism, but that basically, like, there is nothing... Because I can't think of a concept that would allow for anything else that doesn't transcend materialism, right? Like, can you? I don't know. How, how old was this super chat? Oh, I don't know. Years ago. Was it from before I reminded the, people how many A's are in my name? <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely from before that. The, I mean, this has been a long show. This is actually from before the Challenger blew up. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I thought... Challenger blew up. You were talking about somebody on this call. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant, what is that, 1986? Before I was born? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 1999 from Melody Kate. Aaron, you rock. I wish I had a question, but you gave me all the answers. Uh, thank you very much, Melody Kate. We'll assume that Melody's autocorrect jump in. Jumped in. A fair assumption. Yeah. <laughs> $10 from Larry Fishman. Hey, Jimmy, I just want to say that in a roundabout, mutually autistic fashion, the line has given me a new outlook slash lease on life. So you can... Isad. Isad. E-S-A-D. I feel like I should know what this means. So... I feel like I should know what it means. Uh... I don't. Isad. Urban Dictionary says eat shit and die. That's it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thanks, man. It's a good one. It's this is a this is an alternative to go fuck yourself, basically. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Five dollars from Teishi Koshima. Aaron, huge fan of your systematic classification of life series. I'm currently parenting a child with a theist. Any thoughts on raising skeptics? The only thought I can suggest is is to ask you know, what where is the truth of it? Ask to sh be shown the truth of it, and that 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 to me is sufficient, but is a huge fucking challenge to some people, as we saw the Bernard, for example. Bernard's my favorite call uh, of the night, though. Me too. <laughs> uh, five dollars. My five dollars from Luficarious Rat Speed. That'll be the name of my next child. Uh, just call me Luffy. Damn snakes, snakes, and more snakes. Where? <laughs> Don't move. Right behind <laughs> you. <laughs> That's one hell of a broadcasting studio. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of uh, reptiles back here. Thank you very much for that. Five dollars from Eddie Dean at R and Raw. Any of your snakes venomous? That one is mildly so, but just that one, and only a little bit. $6.66 from Jason Jones. Yo, Aaron, coming up to the Oki Noodle in Paul's Valley this year. I'd love to meet you. What's your dream snake? Oki Noodle? Uh, I've been trying to get a, a, I wanted to get a Texas Indigo, a specific one, a particular morph that is only available through one breeder in California. And they told me that they're not going to have any until maybe March. So maybe. Maybe I can get this one particular red throated indigo. I want I want the whole gap. I want the I want the red throat. I want the the brown face with the Alice Cooper tears, and the, there's also yellow in there too. But it, and and but but in, in particular one, and I've been trying to negotiate with the state as to what my my Texas dealer permit allows and doesn't allow, and I want to be explicitly clear in writing from the state as to what I'm permitted to do before I get it, because I don't want there to be any ambiguity. Uh, the Oki Noodle, I assume this was going to be related to snakes in some way, but the uh, the Oki Noodling tournament started 20 years ago, and it's 
Bob's Pig Shop, but it's a fishing tournament. It looks like. Maybe. That doesn't really relate to the second question, does it? Well, I think I think they're saying, yo, Aaron, you coming up to the Okie Noodle in Paul's Valley this year. I think they're asking if you're going to. Yeah, never heard of it before this moment. That. So I'm going to venture to say no. Oh, it's the world's largest hand fishing tournament. I think it's that's the thing where you like you throw your thing down in the, the hole and you pull it out by its throat. Those giant fish, catfish, right? Yeah, I've seen that. I don't really see doing that. It is it is sort of weird if you've never indicated that this is an interest of yours. Like it'd be like if somebody yeah. sent me a super chat like, Hey Jimmy, am I gonna see you at the gym sometime soon? Have you met me? Fuck no. <laughs> what are you talking about at the gym? I am the gym. <laughs> Okay, so nine ninety nine from the Raven two hundred. Who it, 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 my favorite snake of my collection? They use the face right there. That's my snake's face. Uh, oh, geez, I tuned back in and you got off the phone with Andrew again. What a riot! <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Andrew. Oh man, he caught us. Uh, well, me, I think a coward in uh, in the live chat. It's you I'm afraid of, Andrew. I know you're going to turn me into a theist if we let you on. I had to cut you off. <laughs> How can you, can you imagine being afraid of it? These people think <laughs> that we're afraid of them. If yeah. they were right, I know we've had this conversation before, but if they were right, wouldn't you want to know? Exactly. But also like the, the exact positions they hold are so transparent that I don't need to be I'm going to use the phrase, despite the fact that I think I'm quite stupid, I don't need to be as smart as I am to see through their bullshit, which is why I'm willing to debate Francis Collins, who is much smarter than me, on the specific topics for which he suspends that intellectual capability and, and behaves much more stupidly than I do. Yeah, and I have I have a lot of respect for people like Francis Collins and Same. for Kenneth Miller, who I mentioned earlier. You know, I have I respect for academics and for their expertise and all of that. Uh, the, the different the disagreements that we have, I think, are justified. And if there was if they had any credence to their argument, I would want to know that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not scared of the much better theist, let alone Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> or Andrew, <laughs> the guy who can't figure out what a dictionary is. <laughs> How would we go on determining? I'd like to get back to the script that I've prepared for. <clears throat> so, oh shit! I think I just skipped one that uh, that I didn't mean to. Okay, so five dollars from Matt Gresham, Jimmy. I emailed you info about debating platform. Cool. Uh, as far as hey. debates go, I'm you're you're probably never gonna see me do a YouTube debate unless it's on this channel, personally, and maybe not even then because I don't enjoy them. Uh, I plan to platform yeah. the people I think deserve platforming. I think that amateur debate has ruined debate, and YouTube debate has ruined debate. And so you're gonna see me platform people like Aaron and people like Matt, and not assume that that's a position place I belong. Uh, cause I don't want to, I don't want to lower this channel to the standard of debate that would allow me to be the debater. <clears throat> Not soon. Do you anyway. people mind? I'm doing a show. Shut up. Though with the right person, I'd do it. If ben, someone mentioned me versus Ben Carson, of course, if somebody famous like that, the number of Could eyes. You I debating am, Ben Carson? <laughs> I'd love it. Uh, Richard Dawkins uh, did years ago. I think it was Dawkins uh, he, where, when he goes. Yeah, that's and, right. That's and right. I actually want to propose that the ancient J Joseph used the pyramids to store grain. What? The absolute <laughs> proof that it must not be hard to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> because if Ben Carson can do it, anyone can. <laughs> that man is very, very slow. That's my, this is my theory that actually to be a good neurosurgeon, all you have to do is move so slow that any part of the brain you cut has time to heal behind your scalpel. They've already built those synapse connections. <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> right he, moves, <laughs> he moves so slow that it's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, 
Here's the next one. Five dollars Canadian from Kathleen Moncrief. I have Moncrief. nothing bad to say about the show, but I don't want to say something nice and make Jimmy feel awkward. So heck with you, Jimmy. Heck, heck me. That's a very Mormon <laughs> insult. <laughs> Gosh darn it to heck. I said that in an argument with Matt. With excuse me, in an argument with uh, with uh, um, Kent Hovind, and he censored it. Gosh said, darn it to darn heck. It, gosh darn it to heck. And he censored that and, and ridiculed me for having something in my mouth that he wouldn't hold in his hand. So do you feel like, was the censorship so that people would assume you said something worse? I, I, he obviously wasn't paying attention uh, as he, you know, as he doesn't. <laughs> When's the last time he did besides to his own <laughs> words? <laughs> Yeah. And the next chat, $4.99 from the Raven 200 again. I hope you guys can control yourselves. <laughs> Herder. Herder. <laughs> Seriously, after all the times Andrew can't, he can't be for real. I would like to say that he can't be for real either, but I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Yeah. No, Andrew, I actually believe one thing that you're going to notice about the people who aren't trolls is they call in, they get corrected, and then they call again a week later as though they never heard the correction. And that's actually a sign of authenticity. Like fucking Ray Comfort, the biggest douchebag of them all, will call, will debate able- somebody what? on. Yeah. We'll debate somebody on evolutionary biology. We'll go, oh, then correct me then. And somebody will correct him. And you'll go, well, now I have a better understanding. And then next time he'll say the exact same stupid shit. Yep. I saw him in an interview on uh, what? I'm on a show. Stop. <sighs> <laughs> I saw him on a show. He was talking to, to um, uh, Pat Robertson. And he says, let's pretend I'm an evolutionist for a moment. There's a big bang and life forms begin because, you know, those two things are not 10 billion years apart. Those things, one's connected directly to the other. And he says, you know, life forms begin and you you have the evolution of a dog. It suddenly has eyes, legs, and a tail, and it needs to go find a female to mate with. Something else that turned into a dog that has eyes, legs, and a tail. So he's thinking about a a lump (laughs) of hamburger that sat around for millions of years because the big bang caused life to begin. And a lump of hamburger sat around for millions of years and suddenly grew eyes, legs, and a tail. Suddenly, eyes, legs, and a tail all at once. And then has to go look for a female dog because the male is always the first one, right? And so all of this is just by a dice roll. It's all pure chance and happenstance that any of this happens. There's not a chance in hell, no matter how stupid he is, that he could that he could argue with with you know people who accept and understand evolution every day of his life for so many decades and think that that's what evolution is. I'm going to explain it like you five, because that's the limits of my intellectual capability. <laughs> I know that was a little bit more Nick Adams than uh, your your impression is much better than mine. Yeah, well, that was uh, decidedly more Aussie than Kiwi, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got a, you got a, you got a, Eminem. That's, that's, uh, that's how I get to myself into New Zealand. Eminem. I'm your partner. So Reese Darby $6, is dollars my... sixty six cents from Kia Star sixty seven. Have you heard of the Whiteside Museum of Natural History in Seymour, Texas? And what do you think about it? Your opinion would go a long way. I've been there. Uh, I I enjoy that white that that museum. I pleaded with them to uh, to allow me to go on a dig with them because they they I went on a dig in Permian Strata in South Africa. And it was, uh, it was a, it, an incredible experience. I want to do it again. And the, if you want to do the Permian in, in the, in this country, you've got to go through the white side. They, they hold the key to all the Permian uh, strata. That's it. You've got to go through them and there's no way around it, but they either don't know who I am or they don't give a fuck. And um, that's that's the sad thing. You, you, you've got to be one of their students, apparently, or there's no connection. That was very, very frustrating that I, that I just can't go on one of their expeditions with them. Five dollars from. Oh, my gosh. No channel here, bro. 
Okay, took me a minute. I used to work at GameStop and sold people on The Last of Us by telling them it made me feel more than most of my relationships. <laughs> Yo, same though. I understand that it's very well written. I've seen a number of uh, videos about like the, the the making of and 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 uh, what is it the uh, the Easter eggs that are involved in it. It does seem like an extremely well written show. I just haven't had the time to watch it because I don't want to watch it by myself. And it's hard to get, you know, when, you know, I, everybody else can watch it with you. So yeah. uh, $5. Oh, well, I already you already read, read that this one. one. I was just going to say yeah. that by the end of episode three, again, not giving away anything core or spoilery, but for, by the end of episode three, I was pretty much like, nah, I'm not, I'm not bi anymore. I'm just going to go full gay. I changed my mind the next day when I remembered titties, but it was, uh, it was a close <laughs> one there. I almost, <laughs> I almost chose to be gay. <laughs> 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 All right, here's your next one. $5 from Kim Wilson. Great show. I didn't cry at The Last of Us EP3, but I did have to pause a lot, so maybe there's some humanity left in me. Laughing emoji. Is Lloyd Evans still going to be a guest? Yep, on the 20th, I think it is. Very good. $5 from Matt Gresham. Death, spiritual healing. Okay. I don't <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. 999 from the Raven 200. Bernard is what happens to some what happens when someone never grows out of their 12-year-old. I am smart. I know everything phase. <laughs> I didn't read that correctly, but I understand what she's saying. She, I think I've made an assumption there. Raven, yeah, based on the character Raven. I've known a few people that were Raven, that were called Raven, and they were all women. So anyway, uh, $5 from Jason Jones. $5 for, nope, I'm going to cut you off now. Woo! Please hold pinwheels like Maxwell the Geico pig. That was when I jumped in, when he was like, okay, can I finally speak? And I went, nope! <laughs> now I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is a frustrating thing dealing with with the theists, though, with well, all of the psychological defenses that they have for their belief system, all of the echo chambers, and all of the all of the protections and everything. I have a natural desire to know that, that if what I currently believe is not correct, I want to know that it's not correct so that I can correct it. I don't want to be wrong, mm -hmm. and believers do. They don't have any problem. Being wrong, they just want to protect being wrong so that they never learn that they're wrong, and so they'll 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 actively avoid finding out what they already suspect. Mm -hmm. Five dollars yeah, from Eddie Dean. I'm sorry. No, I agreed. I just agreed with you. I just said yep. Five dollars from Eddie Dean at Jimmy. Have you ever considered giving awards or even a ranking system for the types of callers like Bernard or Andrew? No, because it will encourage more people to do it as a joke. Uh, I get the idea. I get the impulse, but I'm not going to let people compete for worst, most stupid, pedantic, whatever caller. Uh, otherwise, it's going to just be wall to wall people seeing if they can get the award as opposed to engaging honestly. And while we did 25 minutes or so with Bernard, understand I understand I knew within 10 minutes, if not more, that there was zero chance of productivity left. And the last 15 yeah. minutes was for the memes. And, and culturally, I mean, this, is, this isn't just your show that's got this problem. I mean, culturally, we have the system already that, that seems to encourage drama and absurdity and where accuracy and credibility are just not valued at all. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck is George Santos still in office? Why was mm -hmm. he not booted day one? Why is he still fucking there? Because we don't care about the truth anymore. Didn't matter. Because he, he revealed to everybody there that he is actually the president. And they took his word for it. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm actually I'm actually the president, so <laughs> he's such a douche. <laughs> and it just doesn't matter. Yeah. I actually I heard somebody say to me, Oh, well, when I said that I must have been lying. You can't believe anything I say when I'm lying. That was his excuse. Yeah. 
Everybody, uh, uh, what is it, exaggerates on their resume. Like, exaggerated. You said your mom, who was in Brazil, died in the Twin Towers in 9 That's a little more than an exaggeration. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like, too, when he's like, by the way, when I was dancing around in drag, I wasn't being a drag queen. Like, fuck you. Fuck you in your fucking face. So he's got a different definition. He was a drag king. No, he's he's just no. trying he's just trying to not be associated with the word that the right has. But by every definition, by every use of what a drag queen is, because a drag queen isn't a transgender term. It's a it's a type of entertainment and expression. Uh, he, he absolutely was being a drag queen. He was just trying to separate himself from a word that completely describes what he was doing. Ten dollars from too young to feel this old. What a great show, especially Bernard's call. A prime example of theists having no idea what they are talking about. Great job, Aaron. Fudge you, Jimmy. Fudge you too, buddy. Uh, I'm putting it in chat, but I guess I could just say it. People were asking about uh, an episode we did in the past with Dark Matter on the channel. I'll put the link in the chat at the end of the show so nobody leaves now. To go watch the other one. It's <laughs> stay. We're almost done. Ten dollars from Lael. Aaron, I would agree with the dictionary on the definition of the word faith. Because the people who agree to put words in dictionary appeal to religion to give one definition in the dictionary. I have gotten into arguments with theists who will tell me when I after I produce a definition and that they don't like. That that I shouldn't just trust a dictionary. That I should tr- that I should go to a theologian. That I should sh- go to some seminary, whatever. You know, okay, fair. If I'm if I'm arguing a scientific definition and the dictionary is not written by a scientist, I don't expect that they're going to get a scientific term correct. So there can be situations where other definitive sources are going to be more accurate than the dictionary is. I was asking this guy this question because I thought. Ignorantly, my na- my naivete. I'm expecting him to say that no, he wouldn't accept a common dictionary's definition. That he's going to want a theologian, you know. So it, that's that's where I was trying to go with that. But that what he would accept as a definitive source. Well, of course, if I'm arguing for science, then shouldn't we take a an academic science source logically? But I'm also trying to argue logically with somebody who doesn't know what a dictionary is or why it exists. Yeah. $9.99 from Crazy Flung. I love your show and would love to have some debates slash discussions with theists and or atheists in Hawaii if anyone knows something other than the Hawaii Secular Society since they aren't very active. Can't speak to that. I've been to Hawaii once. Yeah, for a weekend and that was it. My daughter had this great idea. She was stationed in Oahu, and she, and she thought since I was coming into into Honolulu, I think it was, I was coming in for um, Father's Day on on Father's Day weekend, just by sheer coincidence. And she said she she planned this father's daughter thing where we, her and I, would get in a shark cage five miles offshore. And I thought that was brilliant. It was fun too. Four dollars ninety nine cents for uh, from the Raven two hundred. And the Academy Award for the line's most mentally frustrating caller goes to Bernard. <laughs> if only to, or Bernard could have seen the chat messages that were oh, flying man. by. I like, too, how he, like, he bragged about how he wasn't going to watch the show. I'm like, okay, why are we wasting yeah, our time on I, If I were Bernard, I wouldn't want to watch this show after either. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It didn't go well for you, Bernard. Yeah. Five dollars from RPG Debunks because I want to insert cool techno music here. That's a that's a reference to the intro to Cause I Wanna, which if I take two seconds, I probably can yeah, here we go. Uh this is it. Is this techno? Would you call this techno? I can't hear any music. Oh, you don't? Hang on. I don't think I would call that techno. Well, it's not metal. Yeah. So I don't know. (laughs) 
I'm trying to remember what uh, Holt's definition of rock and roll was in, on. There was, he said something on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It was really funny. I forgot it, though. $10 from Puffy Cloud. Oh, I love that. Look at the, look at the, the, the icon they're using. Outstanding. Line Love from California. Good night, y'all. Thanks. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. $10 from Rick Philbrook. Thanks for what you guys do. Aaron, I had to laugh when I found out you got your, your great Pyrenees dog the same way I got my wife 44 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm very confused. I got this dog because it walked into my house like he oh. lived here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. That's hilarious. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. I'd have kept it too. In fact, I feel like that's my dream. And I love Great Pyrenees. I'd love a Great Pyrenees to just watch, to just walk in uh, and I'd, I'd keep it forever. Or a white German Shepherd. I really think they're pretty. Yes, or a black German Shepherd. You. They're pretty yeah, too. We are. We're talking about you. Here's another <laughs> one. All right. Uh, $10 Australian from Death Row. I'm a born and raised atheist married to a Muslim. What's the most compelling argument I can put to him to convince him that his book isn't holy, God isn't real, and religion is a scam? Wow. Uh, it's so specific having, where, we, where we don't know him. Yeah, but but you know, I mean, we we have to go with generalities. But I mean, having debated with a number of Muslims yeah. already, that's that's a pretty tough challenge. I mean, the big thing for me is all of the scientific in, 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 idiocies that are in the Quran. But that's only if you're a Quranic uh, fundamentalist. You know, when I've, I've had people argue with the Quran who would say that you know that the that the Quran doesn't say this. Yeah, it does, and I'll show you where. But I do that, you know, we do that with the Bible, too. And then when you show them where it says that, then that's not what it says becomes that's not what it means. When they admit that, in fact, it does actually say that. Yeah. So the Quran describes the earth as flat and that the heavens are a, a vault in the ceiling of a giant dome-shaped firmament that, that, that is made of a solid crystal dome and that the, the stars are not stars, they're lights in the firmament that angels can pick up and use as projectile weapons to throw at genies when they get too close to the top of the sky where God's hotel is. But it's really hard to get Muslims to understand that interpretation because they grew up with a different one. Yee. Yeah. All right, there's only one more super chat, so the show's going to end here in a moment unless y'all get them in. Uh, starting in about, uh, five or sorry, $5 more. If you want the show to extend, somebody had said in response to me saying that I think white and black German shepherds are really pretty that the, well, Brown and whatever ones are pretty too. Saying which dogs are pretty is not a commentary on which dogs aren't pretty. I used to have a Brown and uh, I guess it was liver colored, but Brown, black and tan, but slightly off colored German shepherd. And she's my favorite dog I ever had. Nine ninety nine from the Raven two hundred. Which, by the way, I've just I've mentioned this before, but I love the fact that you use Abbott's face uh, just as your as your icon because I'm I'm an immortal fan as well, and an Abbott fan. So, um, laughing out loud, I appreciate you think I'm pretty enough to be a girl, Aaron. No, I'm a man. Raven is my actual name. <laughs> I'm Niz. First Native American on my dad's side. Okay. That's Thank dope. you for that correction. That's dope. All right. Well, what was your favorite part of the night? All right. I'm giving chat one more chance to send in the super chats because that one went fast. What, uh, what do you I, got coming up? I, Go ahead. Yeah, whatever you oh, want. What do I? I don't. Uh, I'm doing. I, I'm going to be. I, I don't have the, the, the speaking schedule that I used to do. I'm, I don't know that I'll ever recover from COVID because my, you know, my speaking schedule, I don't think will ever recover from COVID, but I am doing the American Atheist National Convention in April. Cool. I'm, I'm doing some kind of a remote show for, uh, um, it's not Darwin's Day. I can't remember what we're, we're I'm doing some kind of call in show on a, on a, on a, on in here in February, but I'm not doing any travel. Like you know, in April, I'm going to be at uh, SatanCon 
in Boston. And I'm looking forward to that. Wait, do you think you're doing I, a Colin show on a different channel? Yeah, somebody had me do wants to do a Darwin kind a Darwin Day kind of thing, but they couldn't they couldn't fly us out to do a location, so they're gonna do like a Zoom meeting mm, Darwin just, Day presentation. Just doing Colin yeah. shows all over town. Well, it's not like that. It's not, <laughs> it, I'm giving a presentation or I'm I'm on a panel or something like that, but it's in celebration of it's all good. Darwin Day. But it's remote, so I'm still gonna be here. You know, in the snake farm that you see behind me. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not doing the travel like I used to do pre-COVID until May, and I'm supposed to be in Canada, uh, Central Canada, I think, for one of their their conferences. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I saw your chat about that. Someone needs to tell Dark Matter twenty five twenty five that there are people spamming a scam. Uh, I'll I'll pass it along, but uh, you know. It's it's in all of our comment sections that shit happens. We do our best. Mm -hmm. I don't we don't a lot of us don't even check our comments anymore who are YouTubers because it's a lot of shit. <laughs> it's not good for your mental I, health. I will run through my I will run through comments the first day that I upload a video. Yeah. But I've noticed that the next day they go bad. It's like leaving tomatoes out. I mean it's, I check comments a lot more on the line than I do on Jimmy Snow. Uh because I enjoy antagonizing. There's the same at this one asshole who was in live chat earlier today too. Uh, who like, it's just the biggest douchebag. Uh, who like when we announced that we were going to do our, that we were going to launch Patreon and we're like, all right, the goal for this month is two fifty. We'd love to do 2,500 in a year. Cause that would unlock a lot. And he was like, ha, you might get two fifty in a year. You're not going to get 2,500 in all this stupid shit. And then we got 250 in like three weeks. We fucking threw it. Anyway, he has yet to apologize and admit he was wrong, but he still shows up to say douchey things. I'm not going to say his name because that's what right. he wants. Anyway, here's another super chat. So $5 from Eddie Dean. This channel is my new spending habit. Not complaining, just saying Ed U. Dimmy. Uh, Ed U. Jimmy. I don't know what Ed stands for. Erectile dysfunction. Erectile Jimmy, dysfunction U. Yeah, that's what I yeah. came up with. Thanks, Ed. You too. <laughs> uh, and like we always say, I'm I'm not mad about it being your spending habit either. Never pick us over a bill to pay or feeding yourself. But when you have disposable income, if you like to show your appreciation here and ask questions and all that stuff, it keeps the uh, it keeps everything going. Yeah, someone goes a douchebag in the chat and comments. No, <laughs> I know a shock, a shock it is. Uh, yep. I think there's so, the last one. Uh, four ninety nine from Gregory Super Antichrist Roca, or Rocha. I think, I think it's, it's Roca, but anyway, could be. Uh, just saying hi and thank you both for what y'all do. As a thank last name, I've only ever seen that pronounced Roca. For example, Mo Roca. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was that's Rocha. I think. I think, so. right. I think. Yeah, that would be my best guess. All right, well, I put a link to the episode of The Line in the chat with the Dark Matter episode since people were asking. Otherwise, Aaron, why don't you just say goodbye? We'll call it a goddamn night. Hasta la bye-bye. Oh, that's that's real quick. Go to patreon.com slash Aaron Ra. Support Aaron on Patreon. His channel is Aaron Ra. He's a good dude. Let's have him back. And, I, and I need all the help I can get. <laughs> if, if you don't support him on Patreon, he actually has to sell his channel to Bernard, so you better get over there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Good night, everybody.